All right. It's great to see a full house tonight. This is awesome. Um, we have two meetings back to back tonight. Uh, we have an LPA meeting and then we have our regular agenda meeting. So the LPA, I think, will be relatively quick. And then we will get into our regular meeting. So call this meeting to roll. If we can please call the roll call. Chair Breikers? Here. Vice Chair Jablonski? Here. Board Member Albritton? Present. Board Member Hartman? Here. Board Member Kaczynski? Here. Oh, me. Awesome. If you can please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Barbara, we're thrilled to have you here. I'm going to wait till the second meeting because we'll probably have a few more folks here. And so, thank you. Yeah. Mayor, All right. Yes. Mayor, if I yes, may. Sir. I, item three, the first item to, to be heard on the LPA uh, hearing is not ready for prime time. Okay. As, as you all know, the agendas came out late because we were scrambling with, some, with, with multiple issues on other items. I know that you all haven't had a chance to fully go through that and vet it. There are a lot of questions that came up. Uh, in my individual in, uh, agenda briefings this week. And at this point, staff is going to withdraw this item. I don't need a motion to table. We're just going to go ahead and withdraw it, and we can move on to item number four. Awesome. Thank you. Thank Mary. you. Thank you for that uh, covering that item. All right, item number four. This is a resolution of the local planning agency of the town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, recommending that the town council adopt or not adopt an amendment to the town of Southwest Ranches Unified Land Development Code to create a new rural re residential zoning district with a minimum plot size requirement of 2.5 net acres, providing for an effective date. I'd like to uh, um, move. Make a motion to approve. <laughs> Make a motion to approve, but I wanted to do the, um, the alternate version. I'll second that. OK. That was going to be my motion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm <laughs> Um, wasn't fast enough on the <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. Awesome. So, um, so this is an item. Gary, I, I, I want to give you, I want to turn it over to you. I know this is an, an item that you had uh, kind you. of the genesis. And so if you can. Yeah, if, if, if I could, I'll be, I'll be brief uh, as possible. I don't want to start a coughing spasm or whatever. Um, the, the, rural, the, rural ranch, uh, the rural ranch had a a uh, loophole in it between uh, two and a half acre and two acre. And it was turning into the norm where the two acre was, was basically the, the standard. Mm -hmm. And th this eliminates that loophole um, that we, so that we can have two and a half acres net and gross. And then we kept the 8% uh, plot area the same so it would match the RR. So what basically what this does is this allows for a ag area or whatever you want to do with that area we don't we're not pinning it down to anything specific but if somebody wants to put a barn in they can and if if they want to make it put in a tennis court they can if they want to put in a larger swimming pool whatever it is whatever the property owner wants but this allows the area for it to do that and i think that was really important limiting eliminating that um, half acre slippage that we have and closing that loophole and i i you know i looked at the the rr plus with the uh Ag reserve on it, and I, I think it's a bit a bridge too far, for lack of a better way of saying it. I think it puts too much, uh, too many problems onto the property owner or the developer, and I think this is cleaner and easier to, uh, for everybody to use. And I'd like to see this used in the future. You know, so the easier we can make it, the better off I think it'll it'll go. So Great. that's that's where I'm at with that. Great, thank, thank you, Gary, and thanks for your work on this. Um, other council comments on this? Uh, yes, Mayor. Uh, Gary, thank you very much for uh, for looking at this and for the uh, addendum here. Uh, I've read through it, and uh, you know I did have some questions on the first one that went through, and I've read through this one, and, and this one looks very nice. Thank you very much for taking that time and effort to do that. And and also I'd like to add, we don't have to call it plus; we can call it RRA <laughs> if we can call it anything we want. Right. So right. the plus was just used to delineate between the two the two for right. this instance. I would prefer calling it the RRA to be to be real honest with you, you know. Real so, Gary, so Gary, would you like for me to amend amend it to include the RRA for the designation? Say it again, please. Would you like for me to amend it uh, as to RRA just for that title? That would be fine. Okay, then I'd uh, like to make that uh, amendment to my motion. 
Okay, and I'll and I'll I'll second that. I'll... Okay, awesome. I did um, so. Uh, just to be clear, so the item as we're talking about it right now um, is two and a half acres. It is 8%, and it does not include any ag restriction. That's the alternate. That's that, exactly what I support. Okay, right. which um, I support as well. I did want to, I did, I just, uh, this is nothing sophisticated. I did uh, do a little bit of uh, math over the weekend, and um, <laughs> I'm going to hand this out, and I think we have an overhead for it. It just, uh, it basically shows, um, if you can hand those down, it basically shows for uh, the, the, the different sizes. So, so we, it's, all, it's always two and a half acres, but for the different percentages, what we're talking about is this uh, second column here, the, uh, not up there yet. I'll just, I won't go into specifics, but there's different, basically there's different columns. It's all for two and a half acres, but the difference is whether it is a 8%, uh, 85 9%, 9.5%, or 10% um, designation there. And so basically what it's saying is that it's the same buildable space for two and a half acres at 8% as it is at two acres at 10%. It's the same amount of space you can build on. Mm -hmm. And so I just wanted to kind of illustrate that that's what, that's what was happening. There was no increase or decrease there. It's basically, as, uh, as, as the vice mayor said, it's basically just um, taking us from two acres to two and a half acres. So um, they can work on it. It's, it's not a big deal. I think we're okay. <laughs> I don't think we need the... the... Okay, so I'm going to... Is there any other council comment yeah, before I open I up the public? <laughs> Um, yeah, so I, I went through the same exercise and figured out that it's identical if it's 0.8 on, on one and, and uh, 0.1 on the other, or 0.1. Yeah. And I was having a real challenge with the original, that ag reserve area we were putting in there. Although, I mean, I'm all about open spaces and, and keeping us rural. The challenge I had is once you put that on the, the plat, the... Um, the property is now, the owner is obligated to use it. I, I see that as impacting their property values. If somebody wants to buy a piece of property that they want to throw up tennis courts and there isn't room because they've got the reserved area on there, I, I don't think that's fair. I think that uh, the, the um, alternative is far better in terms of property rights and I certainly can support it for that reason. Awesome. Good. Thank you, Bob. Uh, just one other point also, there, there was some confusion uh, that I heard in all the meetings I've been attending where uh, various property owners and developers have been getting involved. And, you know, at one of the meetings we were referring to RR plus back in when we were using that term. This was another tool in our toolbox. It's not. This is a tool in the developer or the builder or the homeowner's uh, toolbox, not ours. We can't say you have to be this, you have to be that. If they want to rezone the property, they can rezone it to whatever they want as long as it conforms with the law. So this gives a developer, somebody who wants to split one of their large pieces of property and rezone it, uh, an opportunity to use another zoning category, land use category to, to achieve their goals. So I just wanted to bring that up. This isn't a council tool. This is really a property owner tool. Good point. Open it up. Okay, yeah, I'm um, going to open it up to the public. Is there any public comment on this item? Welcome back, Mary Gay. Good to see you. Uh, 
Um, the quick answer to that is no. The quick, the quick answer is no, you don't. It's still one acre home sites. That's correct. Okay, so basically this is more for the developers? That's correct. <laughs> this, this applies, I don't want to say just developers, this applies for property that is currently CF, community facilities, and wants to be rezoned to a residential zoning. That's, that's where it kicks in. Or industrial. That. And there's another one maybe out west that may or may not. There's a few others, yeah. Yeah, that's correct. So it's really CF? It's for, I mean non-residential. Non-residential. Yeah, non-residential. But that CF is the majority. You know, Bergeron could turn around and flip their property as well and, and use the same tools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's industrial. Any other public comment? Yeah, go ahead, Carlos. Um, I don't think we're making any changes there. Yeah. Mayor, it, is there? It is in there. That's the only other change is the is the pervious area. Uh, this ordinance would increase it from sixty percent to seventy percent. Uh, I was not aware of that. Me neither. I didn't. I didn't read it. That, I didn't read it that way. I didn't read it that way. Thanks for bringing that to our attention. Any other public comment? Seeing none, public comment closed. Um, oh, go ahead. Thank you. My name is Robert Lewin. I've been a resident in uh, Sunshine Ranch since early, since 74. Can you just so, give your address, please? Uh, 13,000 Lewin Lane. Thank you. Thank you, on the corner of uh, Malaluk and Sterling. So the, I think the situation is such is that the rules for Circle S has really stuck in the craw of everybody. And we wouldn't even be up here today if Circle S didn't happen because we already had the rules in place. So there were change for them. So everyone, this pendulum swing all the way this way is because of Circle, is because of circle S. There's no reason for this giant move, because when you have the pendulum all the way this way, look what happens. You're gonna move the pendulum all the way that way, look what happens. So what I'm asking for, when I lived here, it was five acres. Then it got changed to two and a half, then it got changed to two for a builder's two acres. So it's changed, but if you keep with what was here before the Circle S, none of this is necessary. And I don't understand why, Circle S is like I said, that's why everyone's here, because they don't want that again. And no one's asking for that again. We're asking for what the rules and laws are already on the books for what we need to stay rule because no one likes that more than I do. I've been here my whole life. So that's what I think it is. I think sometimes there's a overreaction and I hope that doesn't happen here, but we all love the community and that's why we're here. Thank you very much. Thank you, appreciate it. <laughs> Excuse me. I just want to make a comment. Very quickly, Gay. Yeah, no, it, it will be. Uh, the reason Circle F wound up, Circle S wound up with the one acre home sites in there was because of that blanket that was put in that area for one acre home sites. Because if it had been Ag 1, which it was, but when it, when it had that blanket come over it, it was one acre home sites. Right. Believe me, I was a strong defender of getting rid of that because it should have been two acre home sites in there. And as far as the other, um, I think that 
any A2 zoning or A1 zoning, I have to go back to A1, but the A2 is the same, is one acre home sites, no, two and a half. If you read the A1, if I were to take my property and divide it up, I have to go to two and a half if I don't have a blanket. Right. So that's why CESAS is the way it is. <clears throat> Thank you. All right. Hey, uh, Mr. Mayor. I have a public question. public uh, session closed. Yeah, I have a question for uh, Jeff. Um, um, Jeff, the, the RR had, uh, is at 60%. Why, why did it jump to 70? Uh, Vice Mayor, it was all part of uh, recalibrating this um, when we were doing the um, the the ag the agricultural portion uh, that's in your main that was the main uh, uh, and published agenda item. Um, plot coverage was decreased, and while that does allow um, the same footprint that on the that, that's allowed on two ten percent on two acres. Um, uh, I felt that uh, that a, a slight increase in the uh, open space was appropriate because you're having the same footprint, not a bigger footprint, um, and therefore you have less of the property that needs to be paved. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I simply I calibrated it to go with plot coverage. Um, Unfortunately, some of the underlying, the, the formatting doesn't, didn't show up in the ordinance. It's probably why you weren't aware that it went from 60 to 70. Um, and that's, that's a, a novice thing that, uh, that we'll work on. But yes, that's the reason. Okay. Well, the question is, do we want to keep it at 70 or do we want to move it back to 60? Uh, Mr. Right. Mayor. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm good with the 60 to be so honest. I, yeah. I, I, I would like to amend my motion to strike out that language um, in, uh, from line 32 on page 3 of 5. After the comma, actually including the comma after A2 districts, strike that language out to the end of the period of that sentence. Yeah. And I would like to amend my motion to I'll, to I'll that. second that. Okay. Good. So awesome. we'll... So we're moving it back to 60%. Yes. Yeah, correct. Okay. Correct. All right. Any further comment or discussion yeah, on this just item? Just a quick comment. Uh, Mr. Liu and I heard your comments last night on the Sunshine Ranches meeting. And, you know, I heard your, your discussion on kind of the pendulum swinging. To Mary Gay's point, they put an overlay on uh, the old Sessa property 25 years ago at least. I mean, it's long before we were a town. And what that did was that whole stretch there became basically rural estates, one acre, you know, one acre plus type lots. And I think where the pendulum swung was when we saw what they were doing, uh, we really figured out very quickly that there isn't much room for animals because what they were doing is their open space became drainage. You put a horse in a foot of water for three months and you're going to lose the horse and his feet. I mean, it creates all kinds of problems. So we then looked at the, the uh, reserve area to try to put something out there so we don't run into a similar situation. Um, that was really not a zoning change. That was a, a site plan that we were really trying to fix going forward. And we've gone back and looked at some of the other sites that have been developed in the last couple of years to see what we can do about <clears throat> allowing for room on, on the lots. And what it comes down to is the site plans themselves. We, unlike the zoning and the land use, we can't change that on somebody when they, they come up. They can adopt one of the categories that suits what they want to build and uh, you know suits their, their needs. And that's what we can go with. So, what you heard was throughout these discussions was, well, we did like the idea of the reserve area, but the more I've thought about it, you know, we, you, if you notice at various meetings, we don't say much because we, this is our place to speak. I, I think we're all uncomfortable. We like the idea of open spaces. I, I, I think I could speak on behalf of the council. We like the idea of, you know, keeping us as rural as we can within the, the constraints, but we don't want to violate property rights either. So, you know, that pendulum swinging, it happened in our heads. It, it never happened in reality. So here we are now, when the rubber meets the road, eliminating the things that were brought up and, and really just creating a new category 
that again gives uh, whoever is subdividing or rezoning property a new category to work within. So I, hopefully there's no pendulums out there swinging up and down Griffin Road, but here we are, you know, where I think we need to be. And we'll see when we vote in two minutes. Good, thank you, Bob. All right, any other final comments? Seeing none, if we can please call the roll. <clears throat> Mayor, real quick, this is with the 60%, correct? This is with the 60%. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Board Member Hartman? Yes. Board Member Kaczynski? Yes. Vice Chair Jablonski? Yes. And Chair Bright Cruz? Yes. Motion passes. Very good. And then we have the approval of the minutes from April 14th. Is there any... Uh, Motion to approve. Second. Is there any additions, corrections from the council? Any additions or corrections from the public? See. Carlos? I just want to clear up on the record. Uh, when I spoke to Jeff a couple of days ago, uh, the 2% for overhang still is allowed above the 8%, making it 10%, correct? Yeah, it doesn't change that. Okay. Good. Seeing no further public comment, please, please call the roll. Board Member Albritton? Yes. Board Member Hartman? Yes. Board Member Kaczynski? Yes. Vice Chair Jablonski? Yes. Chair Brightcruz? Yes. Motion passes. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. There. No. Motion to adjourn, and I think we can jump right into our regular meeting. If we can please call the roll. Mayor Breakers? Here. Vice Mayor Jablonski? Here. Council Member Albritton? Present. Council Member Hartman? Here. Council Member Kaczynski? Here. We have a quorum, Mayor. Thank you very much. If you please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> okay. Um, before we get started, um, I just want to take a moment. Uh, this was uh, a kind of, uh, it was a sad week, a difficult week for our town. Um, we lost a, uh, a friend. We lost a co-worker, we lost um, uh, part of our heart and soul this past week. And that was uh, Sandy Longo, who has worked for our town for about nine years, passed away. And so um, she did some amazing things for our town. Um, she uh, was truly a special person. Um, she, she had a great sense of humor. Um, she was always smiling, always laughing, and um, just a really... Um, upbeat, wonderful person to be around. And I know, I know when, she, when she first started here, um, we, uh, our disaster recovery plan was a little shaky. And she came in here with all the professionalism that it took to relook at what we were doing, um, bring all the parties together, and, um, and then test it out through the table testing and, and make sure it all worked. And, um, and in the past, since she's been here and going forward, um, whenever a hurricane comes through, I know that her preparation and her hard work will continue to show benefits for our town for all that she's done. Um, truly a special person. She will absolutely be missed. Um, and, um, and I'd like to just take a moment of silence, please, to recognize that. Great, thank you very much. All right, we are very uh, fortunate and blessed to have uh, Barbara Sharif here with us. She has no stranger to the Southwest Ranches. She has been a partner with us for many, many years. Um, she uh, dates back to, well, I don't, I'm, <laughs> that, that sounds terrible. <laughs> her, her involvement in the town dates back to, uh, um, the, Keith just recently pointed out, uh, reminded me, that uh, when we did the, the, when we moved from BSO to Davy, um, there was a ton of equipment and a lot of um, supplies and things that were there, literally millions of dollars. Um, and uh, she fought for us. 
and she got that transferred over. Really, really saved our bacon, and um, so we really appreciate it. Barbara, you've always been a great partner to us, a great friend, and uh, if you would please just uh, come up and say a few words for us. So first of all, let me start by saying that uh, it was a privilege to serve as your District 8 County Commissioner. And uh, when I first got elected, which was 2010, it's okay, Steve, I just celebrated 50 years. <laughs> I mean, you know, after 50, that's it, it's done. Um, <laughs> just getting started, just yes. getting started, Barbara. Absolutely. <laughs> I don't know, my kids say that's it. Um, <laughs> but, but they're 23 and 21, so, you know, I guess they only have half the years under there. But when, you know, when I, when I first came to this town, I was met with uh, open arms and amazing uh, individuals that were cared about the community that lived here. This lady to my right hosted the first candidate debate that I had here. And I just remember, I don't know if you remember that stoplight she used to put on the table <laughs> and that big buzzer. And... <laughs> <laughs> and give you three minutes to answer each question and then smack the buzzer. But, um, you know, th those are my uh, fondest memories here um, when I began. But when we took on the fight to transition from BSO um, to Davy Police, you know, uh, I remember we had the trailer. So we gave you the trailer, the equipment. And, you know, I've all been all about fiscal responsibility and making sure that you have home rule and that you preserve your budget because that's how you provide quality of life for your residents. And I'm running for Florida State Senate now for District 35. And I've always been there for Southwest Ranches. I'm gonna continue to be there for you. Um, this, uh, this campaign has come down to um, attacking of two, on two issues that are completely false, but um, nonetheless, uh, they're out there and people are hearing them. And I just, I know you know me and you know what I'm about. Uh, I built a business from the ground up with my retired English teacher mother. Um, my mom was a retired elementary school teacher and 22 years ago I built a company that's 500 employees strong and two counties wide. And uh, I'm a doctor of nursing practice, 30 years in the profession. Yes, I started when I was two. <laughs> and so, yeah, <laughs> it's been a long road. It's been exciting. It was a wonderful 11 years at the county. And I want to say thank you for giving me the opportunity to represent you. And I hope that you'll give me that opportunity again. Um, and just if you ever need me, you know I'm here. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Barbara. Really appreciate it. You know, I, and I, I want to say that I really love the fact that you talked about home rule. Home rule is under attack. And... Um, and I appreciate that that's on your agenda and that you're, you know, you're a defender of that because we need it. We need it. Awesome. All right. Okay. Um, public comment. Any, any public comment this evening? Uh, sorry. Mayor, Mayor, we have two public comments uh, tonight. First speaker is Newell Hollingsworth. Second speaker is Walt uh, Butler. And that's it. Okay, okay. And Barbara, you're welcome to stay, but I know you've got a busy schedule, so you're, I, I don't want you to feel bad about walking out either. We're, we're good either way. Thank you. Well, you're going to yeah. run out on me, huh? No, I'm going to listen. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming by. <laughs> Newell Hollingsworth, 199th Avenue. Uh, first on Sandy, uh, she was in charge of our contracts for the waste management not waste management, but the, our waste and our garbage in bulk. And many years ago, I gave her a little shopping cart because I called her the trash lady. And it was a little tiny shopping cart. It was, a, And I, she kept it on her desk and kept her pencils and stuff in it. And I've always remembered that every time I went <laughs> and I saw that. And uh, she was took it very humorously that it was the, the trash lady. <laughs> so anyway... On to the next thing. Emily, you're leaving us. You are the second employee of Southwest Ranches. The first one being Ariel, after we hired our vendor, John Canada, to be our town administrator. 
and you have been here the entire time, and now you're going to be leaving us and become a refugee. <laughs> so you have made a major contribution to our town, and I will regret seeing you leave, but I wish you all the best, and may the wind always be at your back. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. Yeah, Walt. Good evening. Walt Butler, 18901 Southwest 63rd Street. For the past year, my wife and I have had the misfortune of dealing with multiple vicious and aggressive neighborhood dogs. We are fully fenced and cross-fenced, two and a half acres bordered by a canal to the east and by a private lake to the north. We have lost two goats from an unidentified source. We have lost eight goats from our northern neighbor, who has a Belgium Malinois shepherd dog, who entered our property from the east via the canal. The dog ripped the throats out of six goats, left one injured with a hole in her neck, one goat he drowned in the canal as neighbors tried to help. She was heavy, expecting twins, and couldn't get away as the dog held her head underwater till she drowned. He then swam back home. This same dog had previously gone after my grandson as he and his sister kayaked in our lake. And had it not been for my wife and I being there, it could have had a disastrous conclusion. Another German Shepherd, its running mate, a black dog to the south, at a nursery, had made two attempts to kill our goats. One attempt was witnessed by neighbors who screamed for help. My wife and I were outside and ran to the canal where our goat was in the middle of the canal. As the dogs came out, I chased them away. The homeowner who witnessed it with her husband called it a devil dog. It was trying to hold the goat's head underwater, attempting to drown it. That goat miscarried her babies the following week. The dogs then came back two weeks later and tried again. We heard the barking, went out just in time. When the dogs saw us, they took off. I told the owner of the dogs, <clears throat> I don't want to be forced to shoot anyone's dog, but I will if I must. Nor or I nor anyone else should be labeled a bad person for shooting a vicious dog while protecting livestock, pets, or persons, resulting in the death or injury of that dog. People walking or riding along our streets should not have to carry a baseball bat or other weapons to protect themselves from the ever-increasing presence of vicious or aggressive dogs roam in our neighborhood. If you feel a need for a vicious, aggressive dog for whatever reason, you should realize it does no good if you can't secure that dog on your property. Dog ownership comes with responsibility that is put onto the owner. According to Florida State statute, owners of vicious and aggressive dogs need to carry an insurance certificate of liability on such dogs. Insurance companies, underwriters, need to be put on notice as to the presence of such animals residing on the premises. Most insurance companies will not insure such premises with vicious or aggressive dogs uh, for obvious reasons. Our city needs a, a vicious, aggressive dog ordinance to address roving, malicious, and dangerous dogs. There is a Florida State statute which with regards to vicious dogs, but police cannot enforce it unless they actually see the episode take place. A city ordinance allows for the city to have homeowners sign a complaint, and this allows for the city to address the complaint as well as to administer fines and compensation. Davy appears to have a well thought out ordinance that our town might want to consider adopting similar wording, regulations, and fines. I urge the town council to consider this matter. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Walt. Thank you, Walt. Okay. Mayor, we, yeah, we have two more speakers that were late edition, okay. so if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, Gay Chapels, but she's agreed to only speak for a minute. <laughs> for only a minute? Okay, set the timer on. Now, this one I want to see. Set the timer on this Did one. you just say you're going to give me one minute? <laughs> we're just kidding. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I'm just going to add to his yesterday, um, the neighbor's dog, a husky, um, about a year ago got in there and did havoc with my cattle. But yesterday morning, he jumped into the stall where I had a mother and a baby sheep. 
I had two sheep running out there with a cow in the pen. <clears throat> he got the mother by the throat, slammed her up against the wall. There was blood splattered all over the wall. The baby, he grabbed her by the head, and I guess my uh, big dog that I turned out in the yard was going crazy barking, so she must have heard the sheep. It distracted the dog. He jumped out of the stall and I guess was looking for my dog and jumped over the panels, which are this high, to get at the emu. Bad choice on the part of this husky because that emu will take him apart. Yep. Well, he was grabbing its legs and he was jumping up in the air with his talons trying to cut him open. And my son, grandson went out and ran him away. I went down, got the woman, brought her back. I told her she owes me two sheep, number one. Number two, according to the state, when that dog comes on my property again, he's dead. And I don't kill anybody's dog. I've had dogs all my life. But this dog, he killed Josh's pig a month ago. And once they start killing, it isn't going to stop. And she can't keep him in, evidently. So I warned her. I told her that we will shoot it. No two ways about it. And he's going to be a menace, and toddlers are going to be at risk. Because anything that runs, this dog chases. And it's a husky. So people need to keep their dogs under control either on a rope, in the house, walk them, or in a yard. They, he goes over the fences because he went over my, my stall door. So she said he does jump fences. I said, you need to get rid of him. If you can't control him, you need to get rid of him. And it was a rescue dog. I have an idea that this is why he wound up in the pound to begin with. And I know it's terrible to say, but that kind of a dog, if you can't come find him, needs to be put to sleep because he's good, just going to keep killing dog, uh, all the animals. It doesn't matter. Thank you, Kay. Thank you. Uh, uh, Mayor. Oh, I should get back up. Go ahead. Get okay. the Mayor, final speaker is uh, Lorena Mastra Rigo. Has been here before, so I'm getting better at the last name. That was perfect. <laughs> um, I've been here before, and I thank you for having me here before. I came back. Um, I am running for circuit court judge in Broward County. The mail ballots have already been sent. Early voting starts August 13th. I have been a resident of Southwest Ranches now for 13 years. Actually, we moved in right before my big guy back there turned one year old. Um, what street was the Husky on? Because we've had a problem with us. Yes. Yes. So we've yep. had problems with the Husky since he was a puppy. Um, he's been running out of that house. But uh, about me, I've been an attorney now for 23 years, and it's always been in the courtroom. I have over 50 jury trials, over 50 bench trials. I've always been in the trenches, and I was waiting actually for my kids to be a little bit older so they understood what I wanted to do, and uh, he's 13 and my daughter's nine, and uh, this has been a long dream. I'm very involved in my community. I've done coaching for both of my children growing up. I have been involved with the Hispanic community a lot, and with uh, Big Mama and Team of Life, we have provided school supplies, food throughout the year to families in need, and I'm very involved in the legal community as well. But I'm also very involved in our church, St. Bonaventure in Davie. Um, I have been involved with the kids' school. I have been, they finally got rid of me after six years. I was a secretary for two, a treasurer for two, and a president for two. Um, so I just want to keep being involved in the public sector. And to me, a judge is the final step for me in my career. Um, to give back and to help and to keep the professionalism. I My resume is quite long, so I'm not going to go into my awards and everything, but I would love my city's support, and uh, hopefully people realize how important it is to vote and turn out to vote if you're not doing it by mail, early voting, or on Election Day, August 23rd. Thank you so much for all the work you guys do for our city, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak here today. Great. Thank you very much. Appreciate you coming up. 
All right. Um, that's it. That's it. Thank All right. Yeah. I'd like to I'd like to add on to the um, what uh, Walt and Mary Gay were talking about. I think that's that is a real problem, and and it's you know being kind to animals goes both ways, right? We've we've got to being kind to a vicious dog is keeping it under control, um, and so that it does not come to something worse. And um, uh, Walt, you mentioned that there was a uh, an ordinance in Davie that looked like it had some merit to it. I'd like us to take a look yeah, at that. Yeah, let's pull it and let's take a look at it. Mayor, and, it's actually what I just went out and said to Walt and Dina was that I thanked him for bringing that to our attention. I told him I'd get a copy of the Davie Ordinance. Awesome, so. awesome. Thank you, Walt. Really appreciate you coming up and bringing that to our attention. Yeah, go ahead. All right, uh, uh, personal experience with Vicious Dog. Yeah. Every morning, I'm walking my dogs. Um, there was a neighbor that um, did not keep their dogs fenced in. And periodically, their dogs would jump into the canal, swim to the canal, and come toward my dogs as we were um, walking and bark at them. And in one particular morning, I, I was walking, and the dogs jumped the canal and started attacking my dogs. Um, and I know you, you've seen on the Sunshine Ranch's HOA when I've been there, I had well, one of my dogs, um, I called him Kazi. <laughs> well, I had to pull him out of one of the dog's mouth. Mm. And at this time, he was, a, he was just a rescue. He was terrified. And it, was, it took me a long time to get him to calm down after that. But I learned something. And that I learned is that whenever there is an attack uh, of, a, of a dog on, on an animal or any kind of attack, file a police report. Yeah. It's very important to file that police report because subsequent to my attack, those same dogs attacked a baby carriage. After that, the owner was forced to put the dogs down. That, that's why we have to, you have to make that extra effort, call the police, make a report. That's how important it is. And um, maybe the, the, this vicious dog can be calmed down with maybe CBD oil or something. Um, I've heard it works. So um, those are my thoughts. Good. Thank you, David. Mayor, uh, yeah. uh, this individual would like, the resident would like to speak about fireworks. I don't know if you'd like oh, okay. to be open for just one final Absolutely. Speaker. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for coming out. Oh, sorry, I didn't know how to fill out the form. Uh, my name's Lorena Calver. I live on 14130 East Palomino Drive. Uh, I own a training and boarding business with horses, and I have some concerns about the fireworks. Um, from what I understand, fireworks are not allowed near livestock areas. Excuse me. Oh. Um, in addition, um, they're not supposed to be allowed other than the 4th of July. Um, so we had an issue on July 2nd with a lot of fireworks. I called the hotline, I called the police four times, nobody responded, nobody came out. Um, two horses got injured. I have vet, vet bills, they're show horses. The, um, Can we please keep quiet? On, on July 3rd, the same incident happened. I called again, the police, um, I had to call two times. Eventually, they finally came out. Um, again, I have show horses. I know horses can be desensitized. These are show horses. They are worth a lot of money, and I also have clientele's horses that I am responsible for. I don't, I agree with celebrating, that's perfect. I just have to be able to prepare these horses correctly, safely, so that people can celebrate, and with that, requires is for me to know exactly when these fireworks are starting because I have to drug these horses within a certain time period. If not, those drugs do not work. Okay, they'll just go right through their system if I can even catch the horse to drug the horse. I have two horses that got hurt. They're both show horses. Um, and I don't know what to do or, you know, I, I, I don't know where we're at, at, you know. I know they're not legal as far as where they're supposed to be in proximate with my property because they were right in front of the trees. They were big. They're not right. little sparklers. They were big. That's the first thing. The second thing is the speeding. The speeding down Palomino Drive. It's insane. In the mornings, in the evening, it's, it's crazy. Um, can we do anything about that? Speed bumps, you know, I, I've 
had the police come out to help deter the speeding. I, that, that's that's all. Okay. Good. Good. Thank Just you. Just want to keep everybody safe. And happy. Yeah. Thank you. No, I appreciate. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, may, may I ask yeah. her uh, a couple yeah, of questions? Sure. Um, Ms. Kabler, um, mm -hmm. can you tell uh, the council and the residents? The, the values of several of your horses, please? Yes. Thank One you. of them is $150,000 imported from Europe. The other one's $70,000. The other one's $65,000. Yeah. They're not. Right. <laughs> and some of them, I'm respons they're not even mine. You know, some are clients right. that I'm responsible for and I have to keep safe. And I try my best. And it's not, you know. Yeah. That's all. Thank you. I get it. Th thank you for listening. I appreciate it. No, yeah. This, I mean, this is a real issue for us. Um, you know, we're an independent town, and people like their independence and setting off Absolutely. their fireworks. We get it. Mm -hmm. But we are also, our heart and soul is our animals um, and our equestrian community. And, and our dogs uh, we've, got to, we've got to come together as a community on this. And we have to respect, you know, the state is allowing us uh, or, or has set it up that we can't do much on the 4th of July and on December 31st and January 1st. Those are the three days that fireworks are legal. We're trying to do something about that in the ranches. Um, but uh, uh, right now, those are the three days that are legal. But on the 3rd of July, the 2nd of July, the 5th of July, they're not legal. And um, we have tried, we've, we've, we've spoken to, to Davy Police, and they have been, they have been um, much better at going around and documenting these situations. So I'm disappointed that uh, you didn't get a response. Um, I did hear from a lot of residents that did get response on those days. On the 4th of July, not so much, because you know, there's nothing they can do on those days. But we, we really, as a town, we need to respect um, those folks that have animals and horses is a great example, but it, you know, I gotta, it doesn't matter. Animals don't understand fireworks. It doesn't matter what type of animal it is. It could be cattle, could be dogs, could be cats, could be anything. And, um, it is not healthy. It's very stressful to them and it can lead to injury or worse. So, um, we as a town, we really need to respect that, um, more and more going forward. Um, in December, we're going to actually have a um, kind of a town meeting about it in early December to kind of educate folks, talk about like what you're doc talking about, you know, doing some things to prepare for it, um, but also for folks to, to kind of get the word out or, you know, to let people know that this is serious. This is, um, this is something we need to respect as a town. Um, and so we're going to try and, and get a, a kind of a, a, a town community meeting going in early December to help educate this. So it is something I appreciate you very much coming up. It is something that's high on our priority list. And um, we're also in the legislature. We're trying to get a law to uh, get an exemption so that fireworks is not legal on the 4th and the 31st of December and the 1st of January. So I hear you. The toll council hears you. And um, we're, we're sorry that it's still going on, but we're trying to do our best. So thank you. Thank you. I, I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, Bob. Thank you for coming out tonight. I met with uh, Lorena and her daughter at their farm last week. Great. And um, first I wanted to say thank you. They donated uh, two, two halters so that Davey Petey can put them oh, in their nice. cars. Yeah, so nice. thank you again. Um, I've spoken to Nelson Diaz as our portal to Tallahassee and as well uh, to Andy about how we can go about doing this. And Andy is going to coordinate some time with Nelson. And so he, Nelson and uh, Keith can help us draft some different ideas that Nelson has to get this to move forward. He's concerned about broad. Good. He, he, yeah, he's yeah. suggesting very narrow that protects Good. our town. Good. But uh, I don't know if Andy has made any progress on that yet, but what I also had suggested to Lorena is that she bring her family who are involved in it and as well some of the neighbors that can support the position and also give us some feedback on the ideas that we have. Yeah. So. Yeah, we may want to invite Robin to that, Robin Barlman to that I as well. I actually talked to her about it as well. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Good. <clears throat> Jim, why don't you why don't you come up? And the state rep, Anthony Rodriguez, who lives actually in horse country in Kendall, 
he tried to work with her to try to help her get her bill through, but it was too late for her for him to be able to do it. But he wanted to put something together with her for this year coming where they could do them both together. Good. They think if they could group them together, they could probably get it passed. Good. Yeah, I mean, that's what we had to do. That's, I think that's, that's the lesson we learned from the past years. We need to build a, yeah. a coalition, yep. a coalition together to, uh, with a louder voice. Yeah, we definitely need it on both sides of the aisle because, yeah. you know, that's, you know. Yes, we do. It's for everybody. It's not it is. just one group. Um, Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, any other public comment? Seeing none, public comment closed. Um, board reports, any board reports this evening? <laughs> okay. Hmm. Uh, we made a nomination, the Historical Society, the um, town administrator and the mayor and I, and uh, we nominated the Dykes family. So um, we'll be filling out all the paperwork for that. And for the historical society. Yeah, you're already done. I just made a mess. You know, one of the oldies. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, the other thing is that uh, we asked for a camera uh, because uh, when Mr. Polikoff was alive, he started the Historical Society, and um, he gave me a camera, and we did some recording, and he loved it, and then... We kind of dropped the ball because my camera wasn't very good. It kind of got old and tired like me. So we need a new camera, and Doug and I will go back out again, and we'll start recording groups of people that know one another because it makes it more interesting, and they kind of can refresh other people's memories into bringing back everything that has gone on in this town before and after and during so yeah we're we're back and i asked uh josh dykes if he would join us on the historical society and he said yes he would but we need worker bees i mean if this is really putting the hours in because we have to go around and interview people and film it so anybody that wants to join the historical society that's what we need so, unfortunately, the members have passed away that were on it. And I'm 85, so we need to get some younger <laughs> ones on there because I might be in a pine box soon. Thank you. Hey, hey, Gay. So, Nancy is, when I left the house, Nancy's still alive. She's <laughs> on the board. She, Nancy did resign. Oh, she did. Um, yeah, she did resign. Anyway. At any rate, we'll, we'll work yeah, out. We'll, we'll work it out. Later. We'll work it out. I mean, if she wants to come back in, fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Great, great. So um, I'm going to uh, actually lead off council member comments tonight. I'm going to take that. Uh... <laughs> oh, we have, we have more board reports? Oh, man. Oh, man. You know, wait a minute. Before George starts, the first time I, I got to tell this quick story because this do this you, all this really, like makes us this like to? makes us even. This like makes uh -oh. us even. The first the first time I ever met George, we were in a Montessori school, and I got up to talk in public comment, and I'm standing at the mic, and George stepped right in front of me to talk on the mic. So, <laughs> so I should I go did. before he and goes. And I looked at you and said, "Who's this guy? He's never been around before." <laughs> all right, go ahead, George. Sorry. But nonetheless, you uh, you've served the town well. Um, Long story short, uh, with regards to the comprehensive uh, planning board, uh, Joseph was absent uh, last week, I believe it was, and uh, we had a, a good meeting. Basically, we discussed, um, let me just make sure I get things right here, the, re the review of the comprehensive plan as well as a uh, discussion of the rural uh, residential agricultural ordinance and things that we decided to forward to the council, which again, you guys uh, revised and uh, voted on and passed uh, today. So thank you for that. And regarding the drainage that we ha did not meet last month, I believe. So that that's pretty much it. Good. Thank you. Thank you, George. Appreciate it. Any other board reports? Seeing none, uh, council member comments. 
So I'm going to jump in there once, take a, take, take a little liberty, but I'll, I'll, be, I'll be quick. Um, I, was, I was going to introduce uh, Mary Gay as our new uh, uh, historical society, the, the re, re, re in, in reconstituted, yeah, revived, re-envisioned, re-whatever, restarted, retreaded, I don't know what it is. But anyhow, thank you, thank you Mary Gay for, for, for doing that, we appreciate that. Uh, we, <laughs> Always like to keep you guessing, <laughs> but uh, I do appreciate it. Thank you very much, and, and I'm looking forward to that getting started. But I wanted to jump in um, and just say a few words about Emily. I know Emily, Emily, uh, as as Newell has said, uh, is here from the very start, very um, roots of our town, and has been such a uh, critical part of so many projects and so many success stories in here. And in the past, I've tried to give her some credit, but I, I always, she always, always, like, she doesn't want to hear it. So the, tonight you're stuck, okay? You're going you're gonna to hear all the good things, whether you want to or not. Um, but Emily, we really appreciate you. You are such a special talent and such a wonderful person. And um, you have given so much to this town. I know, although you're moving up to South Carolina, you're not really going away. You're going to continue to work for the town, which is awesome. Um, we could not replace you, so that is uh, awesome. Um, but I did. I just wanted to say that um, I'm not sure that everybody in town really knows um, the contributions that Emily brings to our town week after week, day after day, month after month. Um, there, you know, we we sit up here and we talk about these grants that we've got and how we're able to do this project and oh by the way it's not coming out of your taxes and we're doing this project and oh by the way it's not coming out of your taxes and this one after the other one and and we sit up here as a council and we kind of get the accolades of doing a great job and all that but behind the scenes um, Emily is is heading up those and I know a lot of other folks contribute to your success and and I want to make sure everyone recognizes that too but um, that's part of the magic is that she does a great job of working with her teammates and it all works together. So there's a ton of projects here that um, have transformed this town over the last 22 years. And Emily, you're a huge part of that. Um, and, uh, and I'm thrilled that even though I hate to see you move up to the Carolinas, I'm thrilled that you're going near your family. And I know that'll be awesome. And I'm also thrilled that you're gonna continue here at the ranches. Um, truly appreciate all that you do. Thank you. Okay, with that, I'm going to pass the baton. I'll go quick. Yeah. I'll go quick as well. Um, I also want to serenade Emily's accomplishments for over the years. I mean, employee number two, that, that means a lot in this town. She's seen a lot, and I always go back and forth in my mind whether Emily has made us a lot of money or saved us a lot of money? So it just <laughs> depends on how you look at it. Most of the larger projects we do around town are either funded by state or state money for the most part, or they're a match. So if they're funded by the state of Florida, it's not costing our town anything. And Emily is always out there. She never ceases to surprise me on her sources of funding. And, you know, they're, they, she's got... Uh, She's got that little black book she goes into, finds us money, and it's appropriate, and, and we jump on it. The other part of it is, and this is the save or, or find uh, piece, a lot of our projects require matching funds. So the town may have to spend $100,000, uh, which in our budget is a lot of money, uh, but then we'll have matching funds of half a million dollars. Sometimes it's a 50-50 match. <laughs> so what's happening is a lot of the projects we do we would have to wait a year or two or three, but due to Emily's resourcefulness, um, we, we, we've gotten a lot more done over the years than we, we could have done with, our, with uh, our, your tax dollars. So um, as well, Emily has been the liaison for the comp plan board for as long as I can remember. I was on that board for over 10 years and Emily is unflappable. The board will be there pulling their hair out. Uh, they'll be arguing their points. And Emily's sitting there taking accurate notes and, and bringing us all back together when necessary. So she's done a great job. 
Most of her work doesn't go recognized by the public, so that's why it's important for us to, to let you all know. She does a wonderful job, and I'm not going to miss her because she's not really going anywhere. We just won't see her face-to-face -face anymore, uh, except for maybe once in a while you'll come down. So, Emily, thank you for doing a great job over the years, and uh, uh, best of luck in, in your new home up north and being a lot closer to the family. The other uh, item I wanted to mention real quick is, is going back to Sandy Luongo. Um, when Sandy came to work here, I had a background in disaster recovery planning, and I talked to Andy about it, and Andy said, why don't you go in and talk to Sandy about it? Uh, She's about to start a project on that, and or yeah, and um, it was really funny. She grew up in a town two towns away from me. We're pretty close in age. We knew some of the same people. We used to go to the same beach. We were instant friends for all these years, and Sandy made a dent in the town. She had a lot of those thankless jobs, like if if bulk wasn't picked up, you call Sandy. Sandy'd come out. If the bulk guys dug holes in your yard, Sandy came out and she always got it done. She was always there to support our residents. And um, for those of you who didn't know her, she was a fabulous fan of Marilyn Monroe. She had pictures all over her office. Uh, we all told her she looked a lot like her, and I think she did. And, uh, you know, it was a big thrill to her uh, any time to talk about Marilyn Monroe. So. Just a couple of things that I wanted to share that'll be my memories of her, and uh, we'll miss her. We really will. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Um, I want to interrupt just for a second. Speaking, you reminded me, speaking of the comp board, the comp board uh, very much appreciates all your contributions, Emily, as well. And George has a quick presentation mm. from the comp board. Yes, thank you, uh, George Morris. Uh, on behalf of the comm board, uh, Joseph wasn't here tonight. He's the current president. Uh, I've served as uh, secretary, even though I don't have the hair for it, vice president and president in the past. And, and Emily has been a steadfast on the board, and she's really been there for us for, you know, forever, and she's really done a, an excellent job. She certainly saved my behind uh, in the past with respect to taking notes when I was secretary. And you know, I'd, sometimes I just wrote, I would write, see Emily's notes because she would be right there with the computer. She was right on top of everything and she was definitely there and she was, uh, we're gonna sorely miss her. But on behalf of the, the members uh, on the board, um, I'll just mention real quick, Joseph, Jason, Newell, Anna, myself, Lori, and Robert, we put together a little gift card for you and we, just to show our appreciation that we really do care and, and, and we're gonna miss you and good luck in all your ventures in the future. Thank you very much. Okay, who's next? I'll go next. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'll go next. I'll be very brief. Um, if I may, Mayor, thank you. Thank everybody for coming and thank everybody for tuning in. Um, how many do we have on YouTube? Oh, all right. <laughs> okay. Uh, just a few brief announcements. I'll start off with first. Uh, we have the photo contest by the Rural Arts Board. Um, these, it's, uh, it's, the theme is fun, fun in the Ranches. And it's uh, <clears throat> the photo submission need to be in uh, town hall by uh, the 5th of September. And just two other items of note, the Flowmobile, <clears throat> DMV Flowmobile will be here on the 24th from 10 to 2. Please contact Deborah regarding uh, an appointment for that. And it's, it's a real time saver for us that they do this, they provide this service. And then uh, the Broward County property appraiser will be here on the uh, 2nd which is next week from uh, 10 to 12. If you have any property uh, appraiser questions, homestead exemption, ag questions, things of that nature. <clears throat> and just a couple of other things I wanna add. Uh, you know, Emily, uh, we've known each other for well well over 20 years and uh, I can't add anything to what's already been, been said other than you're unflappable. You're the guy <laughs> in, uh, in the uh, ongoing uh, things that went on in the comp board, you were the you were the rock that everybody just kind of like floated around and made sure you were there. You were the, you, re, you kept the, the ship on a steady course. So I really want to say thank you for that. And you're going to be you're going to be missed because I know George and several other individuals are probably going to be duking it out. But uh, <laughs> uh, that, but that that's another story. But at any rate, and then um, the other item I just want to mention is uh, uh, our our dear Sandy who has left us. 
Um, hopefully she is uh, without pain and in a better, in a better place. And uh, we could we couldn't add uh, a better employee in a better spot. And I think everybody <coughs> recognizes that. And uh, we we surely miss her. We'd really miss her. So, and uh, I'll conclude with that, Mayor. Thank you, Gary. I'm up. Go ahead, David. Thank you, everybody, for coming out. Um, I, I, I know there's a common thread with all of us here, besides just the town of Southwest branches and the one people that are here. Like me, you didn't hit Mega Millions. So <laughs> anyway, uh, and there's another drawing tomorrow night. Uh, let's see. Uh, some of the things I'm working on now. Um, the sign ordinance, our uh, campaign signs, um, really or onerous uh, from back in 2000 where it required um, signatures of the residents and I, I felt a lot of that was a little bit onerous. I did learn a lot um, in some of my research that um, we cannot discriminate on uh, sign placing whether it is a commercial or uh, a political or a First Amendment sign. So it, uh, in placing a sign, uh, far too often I've seen commercial signs in the swale. And if the town is allowing that, then by practice, we can't be telling political signs you, keep, you don't belong there. It has to be treated equally. That's something that um, I have learned. Also, I've learned that um, when they have the dates of setting it, uh, when the campaign signs can go out, um, those have not held up under judicial review. Those have been, um, when somebody challenges those, those have been uh, reversed. Um, so those are some of the issues I'm um, looking at with this, and I'll bring a um, proposal really soon. I'll get my uh, drafts over to Keith um, my, with my thoughts. Um, during the last Comprehensive Plan Advisory Board meeting, I learned a very shocking issue that really, really just kind of like, I was like, wow. And it has to do with the groom's quarters. Um, now, uh, on my dog walks, I know a gentleman who, ha who stays as a, in a groom's quarters. Uh, his whole job is caring for racehorses. And that's all he does. And he has the groom's quarters. And I learned that it was removed maybe 2014, 2015 from the ordinances. But it's, uh, there was still a provision in the comp plan. So I would like the town uh, administration to bring back something to resurrect uh, allowing groom's quarters. Um, and last issue I have has to do with the LPRs. Um, I, I've learned that the LPRs are not getting up as quickly as I would like and I'm sure as the council would like. I spoke to a neighbor not too long ago uh, on Mustang Trail. And just recently, I'm going to say within the last week, uh, some bad guys, we'll put it at, hopped his fence, cut his fence, uh, cut the chain to his fence, and were attempting to steal his cars. Uh, he scared them off. But had we had the LPR, we would have a tag number right now. We don't. And so I really would like to see um, whatever can be done with Broward County getting the approvals moving forward because I, it, it's really going to protect our residents. So um, those are my thoughts. Um, thank you, everybody. Thank you, David. Yeah, Jim. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> Now I know how it feels to be last. <laughs> Not nothing to talk about, right? I, I understand. Or anything you hasn't been talked about. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Emily, I'd like to personally say thank you for the time that I was on the comp board as a member and as a new council member. I thank you personally for all your help. It's helped me greatly. All right, and I wish you and the family the best of everything. I really do. All right, thank you. Next, the drainage board, uh, the the drainage and. Green Meadows is getting started. We have a couple of new projects starting there. Uh, we'll be addressing one of those this evening on uh, some of the things we're going to talk about. And the funding is coming from the state, along with Ms. Bartleman's help and, and uh, Emily's help and a few others. Uh, close to a, a million dollar project, and the state's picking up close to 800,000. I think the town will pick up another maybe 100,000 or so. So this is money that's not 
being done by taxpayers. But I will say that Green Meadows will be probably one of the first areas, and I'm proud to say, that has the drainage finished when they're done. They're going to do drainage in the Meadows Sanctuary and the Meadows Preserve area, which will make that area there a lot more usable, friendly for the events that we have there. I think some type of bathroom facilities may go in there instead of the outhouses. Uh, so that would be a great improvement. And, and I'm really thrilled to see that Green Meadows will be one of the first. Also, that moves Green Meadows, if I'm not mistaken, up the list for Tisdor, which is the paving. So not only will we have brand new drainage, but we'll have brand, brand new roads in Green Meadows, and that's happy. Lastly, we are working very hard to revive the Green Meadows Civic Association, Homeowners Association. We've had several meetings. They've went well. This last meeting, we had the president from Sunshine Ranches and the secretary there. Meeting before that, I had Debbie Green from Country Estates come on. Uh, I'm going to invite the police officers next time to come on board and see. And during this time, we've uh, had a, uh, a lady volunteer to step in as the president until we can get the organization together and have an election, and that's Miss Anna Kolbs. Uh, she currently sits on the Comprehensive Planning Board. I know some of you seen around here, uh, but she came over, and we are working real hard to get a list of names together with uh, addresses, emails, phone numbers, so that we can reach out and touch bases to all these people. We've got to come up with some kind of a name. Haven't done that yet. It's Deems Ranches, Green Meadows, uh, and, and Ivanhoe's Estates. I come up with Dig, but they didn't like that worth a darn. So, uh, you know, we're working hard on that. If you know anyone that lives in that area, if you know anyone that's interested, uh, please have them contact me. Get me their email address, and I will get that notice out of the next meeting. It's the last Monday of every month. And we start at 7, and we do everything we can to be out by 8 o'clock. So we're going to get this organization going back, and it's going to be – it'll never be as good as, as Sunshine Ranches. <laughs> that organization has been there 50 years or better. But uh, I am going to give Country Estates and Rolling Oaks a run for their money when we get going. So if anybody's interested, that's out there listening this evening, let me know, and I'd, you know, I'd be happy to get you on our list. Thank you, Mayor. That's all I got. Thank you, Jim. All right, uh, legal comments. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I uh, echo everyone's sentiments about Sandy. Um, she was a ray of light yeah. when you walked into town hall and were able to see her standing in the front or by the front uh, desk. And um, even in her worst times, she was always optimistic, always happy, always friendly, and, and loved this town. So uh, she will be missed. Uh, Emily, congratulations on your uh, relocation. Enjoy the hush puppies and sweet tea. <laughs> <laughs> You'll enjoy it. Um, things that, that occurred in the last just couple of weeks, um, you know, one of the reasons why the agenda was later than usual, it was alluded to earlier, is um, the uh, enormous group in the back there of uh, waste management that we finalize the contract with that's on the agenda later today. Um, I'm sure our residents are going to be very happy uh, with the change in service back to waste management. Um, and uh, we really were putting the finishing touches on that agreement before we wanted the council and the public to review it. And, and waste management was willing uh, to commence service sooner than we originally expected, Andy worked hard to ensure that the transition would occur as soon as possible. Um, and as a result, you know, apologize for a little bit of the delay, but we were going back and forth uh, with some legal language on that, um, which you'll hear later today. Uh, we're still diligently working with uh, MG3 to try to uh, move forward on the P3 agreement. Uh, the vice mayor was on a call with myself with MG3 by accident. Um, earlier uh, this week, and, and just so everyone knows, the main issues that remain are the wetland issue and the cost of the mitigation of the wetland. Um, Andy, myself, and Russell set up a meeting with Senator Rich and uh, the head of, I think he's the head of this uh, county's uh, environmental department at mm -hmm. this point, uh, Lenny Villapondo, uh, to discuss the impact fee from the wetlands out there because the dollar amount that they're going to assess the developer has a direct 
you know, proportionate uh, scale to the price that they can pay. So as a result, it's the town's position that the wetlands are worthless there. And as such, you know, they should not be seen as, uh, as high as it is estimated, which potentially could impact the purchase price. The only other issue out there that we're still working on is, is water and sewer and, and related issues. Um, just because by the, although an on-site well and septic is totally doable, approved by DEP already and, and not an issue, if there's uh, another option, um, it could potentially provide more developable area, more rental space for outdoor storage, which could increase revenue for all and increase purchase price. So we're working on those issues. I actually uh, had a very nice meeting with uh, the Vice Mayor of Pembroke Pines this week. Um, and, uh, you know, um, but for some issues there, uh, hopefully in the future there could be a relationship. So, uh, which would uh, bear well for the, the property. So, um, other than that, I, I know uh, Commissioner Kaczynski mentioned the, uh, the signage ordinance. I, I sent an initial draft for his review so he could start editing it and marking it up. And I believe he wants to bring that back as soon as possible so that it can be implemented. I, I think this election cycle was the desire. So, uh, that's coming on the agenda soon. Other than that, no further legal comments, Mayor. Thank you, Keith. All right. Um, administrative comments. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. First of all, I'd like to thank you for your comments earlier and, and the rest of the council's comments on, on the loss of Sandy. Uh, Sandy was actually the first hire I made as town administrator. And uh, she was, as Keith said, always very positive, always upbeat, and, and took on more odd jobs. I can tell you that when we had a project that I didn't know what to do with it, generally that's where it wound up. And, and she'd find a way to do it. So we are a small team. We are a close family. That was certainly a gut punch for all of us. Uh, she will be missed. She was a very important part of our team, and, and, and we will certainly miss her. Uh, as far as Emily, I'm going to turn my attention to you. When you come in here as a town administrator or anywhere you go, the first thing you start doing is you want to evaluate your staff. You want to meet with them all individually. You want to know who's strong, who's weak, who can help you, who's, gonna, you know, who's doing their job. Emily be very, very quickly became somebody that I knew I could count on, that I could lean on, and I have done that for 10 years. And, and I'll say that, that success I've had here, a lot of it is, is certainly because of you, and I will, I will always be appreciative of that. I wish you the best. Uh, I've learned to count on you over 10 years, and that's why I'm not letting you go. <laughs> so you'll continue to do what you're, what you're doing up there and, and continue to benefit the town. Uh, the project we have further down on the agenda, the, the Green Meadows drainage project is, is uh, about $800,000 from the state. That started with, with information that Emily drafted and prepared for our lobbyist. So her, her role in this town, what she's done, is just, is just absolutely immense. And uh, we're going to do everything we can to keep her rolling forward and doing those things. I do want to call special attention to Mr. Morris. <laughs> the, this is... This is th no, this one's a good one, George. Uh, as you all know, we had stockpiled some fill out at Country Estates Park from, from some other Tisdor projects, some other related projects with the intent of spreading it over the ball fields. We had a bunch of fill out there. We went out and got bids on, on spreading that fill. And, and some of those costs were substantially high. George came in with a much lower number, significantly lower, saved the town a great deal of money and, and took on that project of, of spreading that fill. While he was doing it, we learned that that fill wasn't as clean as we thought it was. There were a lot of rocks, there was some trash, there were some other things in it that, that while it might have raised up the ball field, wasn't going to give us that better surface that we were hoping for. And, and George then further donated truckloads of really pure, really clean fill that's going to give us the service that we're looking out there for. So, George, you came in with a great price, and then you went above and beyond it, and I want to thank you and, and acknowledge you for that. So thank you so much. We're, we're going to hold you to that. And we do have signs out there that the, the ground is under repair, trying to keep people from, from, from tracking it up or, or causing a problem out there. But we're looking forward to getting that, that project uh, a little bit further advanced. Thank you, George. Really, from the town, we really appreciate all that you do. Thank you. And as, as you know, em Emily is, is moving off to South Carolina. Philip, who is our engineer one, has left Public Works. Rod and, and Susan will be holding down the fort within, within Town Hall. 
Uh, just to let you know that some of our plan reviews may slow down a little bit. We're, we're advertising to fill that other position. We, we will, I'll, I'll assure you that we will still meet or exceed other municipalities in their plan review time. We, we may not be as quick as we've been in the past, but we'll do everything to hold to that. I know Rod will do everything he can. So if you get some, some complaints, if some residents raise some issues on that, because we've traditionally turned things around in a day or two, that, 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 that might take a little bit more than that, you know, let us know. We'll certainly do our best to, to work with those residents. But I just want to give you a heads up on that now. I know that Rod will do a good job, but he can't do everything all by himself all at once. So, but we'll get where we need to be. And the only other thing I wanted to add was uh, Council Member Kaczynski brought up LPRs. There, you know, our, our vendor is working with the county, working with FPNL. We'll prepare a full update for you for the next council meeting and, and, and give you the scoop on uh, exactly where we are with the time frame on, on those cameras and where we are. Okay? Thank you, Mayor. That's all I have. Thank you, Andy. All right. Item number eight. This is an ordinance of the Town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, amending the Town of Southwest Ranches Unified Land Development Code, Article 45, entitled Agricultural and Rural Districts to create a new rural residential zoning district with a minimum plot size requirement of 2.5 net acres, providing for codification, providing for conflict, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date. Mayor, um, a couple of things I just want to bring up real quickly. Th this comes to you as amended. Uh, from the last meeting with all of the comments incorporated by reference. So Good. Um, you don't have to restate everything before. I do want to say something be beforehand about amendments to the zoning code, okay, because we had a discussion and I want to bring it uh, uh, public what that discussion was. There is a debate in thinking as to whether or not amendments to zoning code require five votes, 5-0 vote, or whether just not the implementation of an amendment to the zoning code on a particular property would require five, five votes because one is legislative in action and the, the latter is quasi-judicial in action. So I went back and forth with the mayor, who's always a great uh, person to debate, um, and after debating for five minutes, I said to myself, it was your charter amendment. What did you intend it to mean? And, and, and that's when the mayor came back and said, I intended it to be 5-0 for all of them. So if, if that was the intent, and, and, and the person who made the item is on the, the council, I, I called Andy and I said, well, clearly that's the intent. So if that's the intent, you know, I want to make it clear to the council that that is the intent moving forward. We haven't had an issue, you know, previously to this. So... Uh, through application in the future, it will be applied in the manner that you intended uh, as the drafter of the 5-0 to make it 5-0 uh, for amendments uh, to both the zoning code and the um, uh, comprehensive plan as well. So with that said, and I know there's unanim unanimity on, on this uh, anyway, but I just wanted to bring that up as the start of the item so uh, we don't have that debate in the future. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Keith. If you could read into the record, Russell. Did you? Sorry. Okay. Right. I make a motion that we accept what the uh, local planning agency uh, recommended earlier today. Okay. I second. I have a motion. A second. <clears throat> All the prior comments are read into the record, are part of the record. Um, any further comment from the council? Seeing none, any comment from public? Seeing none, if we can read the roll. Councilmember Albritton? Yes. Councilmember Hartman? Yes. Councilmember Kaczynski? Yes. Vice Mayor Jablonski? Yes. Mayor Breikers? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you. Hey, I want to take a little liberty here. Um, I apologize. I got a text, and I don't always look at my text up here. I try and concentrate on what's going on here. But this one was important, and, uh, and I missed it, so I should have gotten this a little bit sooner. Um, we have our former mayor here, Doug. It's always wonderful to see you here. Thank you for coming out. But he wants to just say a couple words, and I want to make sure that I honor that. Thank you for coming out. Doug McKay. Uh, greatly appreciate 4851 Southwest 130th Ave. Thanks, Mayor. Appreciate you uh, catching that. So uh, I just want to say uh, sorry we uh, lost Sandy. And uh, she's in a better place and not in pain. So uh, hopefully most of us, if not all of us, will see her on the other side. So I wanted to say to Emily, Emily, 12 years, my dear, 
It was wonderful, great. Uh, you were, as they've all said, I don't need to repeat it all, but uh, you were a, a main focus of uh, helping us get things done, finding money, turning over rocks and stones and making things happen. And uh, it was a pleasure and an honor working with you. Uh, I know you got your hands full with family and your daughter, so that's very cool. But uh, hopefully, we'll, uh, when you visit, you'll come see us when you come to town or whatever. But I uh, just had to get up and say something. So thank you. It was an honor and a pleasure, and thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> Mayor. Yes. I item 9, which was the house uh, home-based business ordinance that was uh, withdrawn from the LPA hearing. Uh, staff would like to withdraw it at this time from the regular council meeting as well. Understood. Thank you. So that's withdrawn. Uh, item number 10. Item number 10 is a resolution of the town council of the town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, approving the selection committee's ranking and selection of Waste Management, Inc. of Florida for the town's franchised solid waste, recyclables, and bulk waste collection and disposal services provider authorizing the mayor, town administrator, and town attorney to enter into a franchise agreement with Waste Management, Inc. of Florida, authorizing the appropriate town staff to make any and all non-material changes necessary and proper to effectuate the intent of this resolution and providing for an effective day. Great, thank you. I'll make a motion to approve based on one stipulation if they can start tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> no, kidding. I'm kidding on the tomorrow part. Okay. Second. Yeah, Ma Mayor, our, yes. our, our solid waste consultant, Allison True Luck, is online, and we have a presentation to uh, to share with the council at this time. Okay. Perfect. Evening, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Yes, Welcome, we can Allison. Thank you, and I'm sorry I couldn't be there in person. I'm going to share my screen, and I will be brief with the presentation. Uh, let me get this up here. That's good. And I believe there may be um, a few second delay as I go through the slides, but I will go through it quickly. So I just wanted to give a quick overview of the procurement process and then the results of the procurement process and the results of the negotiations. And then I'll wrap up with the staff recommendations for the service delivery option and the recommendation for award. Some key elements of the RFP, we released it back on March 31st. We had our pre-proposal meeting on April 7th. We had nine haulers attend the pre-proposal meeting and proposals were due on May 13th. We received four proposals. So not quite half of the haulers that attended the pre-bid actually proposed. We had a selection committee made up of five committee members. Four of them were with the town. One was from a neighboring city and they did the scoring and ranking of the non-price elements. And then my firm did the scoring of the price element of the RFP. And the RFP included two different residential collection service options that I will um, give a little bit more detail on. The first option we called scenario A, and this would be solid waste collection with carts twice a week, recycling collection with carts once a week, and then keeping the every other week bulk waste collection with the 12 cubic yard limit. Um, scenario B was reducing the frequency to once a week for solid waste and every other week for re recycling. And I mentioned that the, the selection committee scored the non-price elements, so that was criterion one and two of three of our different evaluation criteria. The first one was on experience and prior performance, and so that was worth 25 out of a total of 100 points. The second was on the equipment and personnel and resources that were proposed, as well as the technical approach and the implementation plan. And that was 40 out of 100 points. And then the cost element was 35 out of 100 points. So the RFP was designed to make sure that we got the best value for the town. So the non-price elements that were scored by the selection committee is what you can see in the second column on this table. Um, so that's an average of the five different selection committee member scores. And as you can see with the, the scores, their uh, waste management scored the highest on the nine price elements by about a little more than 10 points. What you can see in the other two columns under scenario A and scenario B is the proposed price per service unit per month 
that would be paid to the hauler by each of the four proposers for each of the scenarios. So you can see that Great Waste had the lowest price for both scenarios, and then Waste Management had the second lowest price for both scenarios. And so Nugen did the scoring on price, and that was based on a formula that we provided in the RFP so that everyone knew exactly how we were going to score price. So the, the maximum of 35 points, you can see that Great Waste got all 35 of those points because they were the lowest price on both scenarios. And then with waste management being the second lowest price, um, they got 30 points on scenario A out of 35, and then 31 points on scenario B out of 35. So when we take those non-price elements scored by the selection committee and add to it the price scores, um, you can see that waste management ended up first ranked on both scenario A and scenario B by about 20 points. So with the negotiations with the first ranked proposer, and again, they were ranked first overall in both scenarios and the second lowest price in both scenarios, the negotiations focused on scenario A, which would be keeping the same frequency of service for the residential customers. And I think um, Andy alluded to this earlier that they can begin October 1st, which is really helpful and important. Their originally proposed rate was $86.51 per service unit per month. And with the negotiations that came down to $82 and 45 cents. Um, the current rate is 4561. So this does represent a significant increase, but you saw on the earlier slides where the other proposers came in as well. So um, this is what the market is telling us right now, as far as how much it costs to get the, the collection services provided. Something that I'd mentioned back in February before we released the RFP had to do with the challenges facing the solid waste industry, um, supply chain issues, staffing, inflation, uh, all of those things remain issues. In some cases, those issues have, have gotten worse. So I just wanted to include this reminder of, of some of the challenges that the solid waste industry is facing today. So I'll wrap up with the, the staff recommendations. Uh, First, on the, the, the frequency of service, staff is recommending to keep the, that current twice a week solid waste, once a week recycling, and every other week bulk waste. And the bulk waste cubic yard limit will remain at 12 cubic yards every other week. Uh, I mentioned earlier, too, that this will go to automated collection for solid waste. Um, so it'll be a cart bigger than the recycling cart, but the, the same premise. That helps mitigate workforce challenges, and it improves collection efficiency and also aesthetics. And then staff is also recommending to approve the negotiated agreement with waste management. And that's an eight year initial term with three one year renewals. Um, I know I went through that very quickly. So if you have any questions, um, please let me know. Great, thank you, Allison. Um, any questions for Allison? Yeah, I guess it's, it's more of a concern than a question. Okay. So when I read the contract, I noticed that um, the, uh, the hauler will be taking off on holidays, which that's fine. Um, when it comes to solid waste, if 4th of July is on a Wednesday, I have pickups on Wednesdays and Saturdays, my next pickup would be Saturday. Not, not that big a deal. I'm thinking more along the lines of bulk, though. If bulk happens to fall on a holiday, we won't have bulk pickup for roughly a month. I'm wondering, uh, good question. So I'm wondering if it falls on a holiday, is the schedule pushed back a day or, is, I was it, going. or is it eliminated? I'm not, that's not clear to me in the contract. So, you know, Allison, that's a question for you in terms of how bulk would be handled if the normal uh, uh, pickup day is on a holiday. Well, and part of the agreement, I'm, I just pulled that up actually, is that it would be on the next work day. Um, I think, let me make sure that might have been commercial. Let me make sure on the residential that I've got that right. I didn't see that. That was a big contract. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, Give me no, just no, one second. <laughs> Mayor. What's that? I, I think we got the assurance from yeah, the provider um, that it's the next day. Why don't, why don't we introduce uh, waste management and have someone come up front because we may have some questions for you as well. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, Vice Mayor, Council Members and staff. My name is Barbara Herrera. 
I am a government affairs manager with WM, formerly Waste Management. My address is 1800 North Military Trail, Suite 201, Boca Raton, Florida. Great. Thank you. And Welcome. I'm very happy to be here tonight, sir. Thank We're you. We're glad to have you here. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Great. Um, I don't know. Can you address the question? That, Absolutely. Uh, Council member. So, yes. When it comes to bulk pickups, we can certainly catch up on the day after a holiday. However, I do want to stress that when it comes to solid waste collection and recycling, it would be the next service day. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Very good. Good. It's really out of 179 pages of reading, the only question I had. Of okay. It. All right. Yeah, go ahead, yeah, David. Uh, um, several times, and um, actually it's, I've seen it on Holiday Trail where I live, um, neighbors have exceeded 12 cubic art yards. What is the procedure so I can advise my neighbors how uh, WM is going to uh, deal with the excess Thank you, Council Member. That's a very good question, and my apologies if there's feedback. <laughs> so, from what I understand from the contract requirements, and probably I'm sure the town staff can explain it better than I can, we, as you said, we are limited to collect 12 cubic yards per collection. That's every other week. So that's 24 cubic yards of material. However, we all know that often that may be exceeded. So in the case that it is exceeded, the hauler, is required to collect the excess bulk. However, there would be a charge per cubic yard for that excess bulk, which is then notified. We notify the, <coughs> the customer, the resident. We let them know what the charge is, and then we proceed. If I can follow up. I uh, what, is, what would be the, um, the method to enforce if you can talk to the mic, David. Oh, how would you um, enforce that payment? Thank you, sir. Again, that's a very good question. So my understanding from the contract is that we would be required to collect it. Uh, if, the, uh, if there is a discrepancy or if there's any kind of issue, it would certainly be taken to the town to correct. Uh, however, we are required to collect. And if there is non-payment, then I know that the city does have a method to cure with the special magistrate procedure. Yeah, Thank Ma you. Mayor, uh, mm -hmm. Council Member, yeah. may I ask Public Works Director Rod Lay to speak to this a little sure. bit further, just to give you a little bit more assurance? I, I, I don't know if you want me to, it's, 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 it, it, Rod, you can address it, but if the council wants to look at it while he's addressing it, it's page 12, section five, and it lays out the complete procedure. But Section 5D, yeah. yeah. But yeah, thank you, Mayor and Council. I actually thought, um, good job, Barbara, but I thought waste management was going to have more people here tonight, honestly. But um, <laughs> um, I, I do have to say, we've, we've been doing this for a while now, and um, it's going to be a similar process. Similar in, in, in the special magistrate aspect of it, but um, what we're going to do is, is waste at uh, WM, I'm sorry, WM's going to go, they're going to go out there, assess the pile. They're going to tag the pile that's over it. Then they're going to have a conversation with the resident. If there is not a consensus between the resident and the homeowner, then WM will contact town staff. So somebody from town staff will then go out there. So now we can verify the plan. There's be consensus at least between the vendor and the town to, to ensure maybe there's a um, recalculation of the actual pile size. Um, but once we get consensus on the size, we'll go ahead and, and uh, again have that communication with the resident, let them know, hey, this is the amount, this is the final determination of the pile size, this is the overage amount. Uh, and then at that point, they might have the ability, if they want to remove excess of 12 yards, they say, okay, we're gonna take this amount, we'll put it back in our yard, we'll only put that out, or they agree to pay. Now, when everybody agrees to pay, they'll go ahead and send the invoice. If they don't collect, so if, um, if the resident doesn't pay within, I think, 30 days, then what will happen is we'll go ahead and, and uh, contact code, we'll initiate a code hearing, they'll, they'll initiate a case, such as they log it, and then it'll go uh, in front of the special magistrate. And at that point, you'll have both WM staff, you'll have town staff, and then we'll go from there. Great. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Rod. Um, one, if I can just jump in there just for a second. So one of the things that I think has been unclear to our residents is, and as a matter of fact, I just got an email on it today, but it certainly is not the first time I've got it, is that residents um, reading through this expect that okay, they get a notification that it's over 12 cubic yards, but they expect it to be picked up and it's not. And I think we wanna be clear about that, that initially it's not gonna be picked up. 
it's going to be left there until all these mechanics are worked out, and then probably Correct. in the next couple of days, yeah, it, would so be, it would be picked up. I think we need to make sure that's communicated because uh, it is a question that I get a lot. Yeah, in the conversations we had initially with Waste Pro, I mean, sorry, with, with WM, they, they, they know the urgency. We've kind of expressed that urgency um, and, and the hardships that we've been going through. So they, they've, uh, they're very cognizant of, of the need to expedite that process. And they've been, you know, I, I don't want to say that they committed to that very same day, but they, they're going to make every assurance that they can that they can contact somebody from, from the town that same day and we could resolve it as quick as possible. Awesome, good, thank you. Mayor, one thing in the, in the contract that's important to point out, um, especially residents who may be hearing this for the first time, is the town's going to carted service. That was decided a yeah. long time ago. So every resident is gonna be given one cart. All residents are allowed to purchase annually an additional cart. And the way that works is the town in this agreement will be providing that invoicing for the second cart. The resident will pay for the second cart and then we will notify waste management that it's been paid and they pick up both carts for the remainder of the year. There's no proration for that cart. Right. So if you buy it in January, it's yours all year. If you buy it in, uh, in, in November, it's still the same price for that year. So that is going to be probably one of the larger changes, you know, in their pickup that the residents just have to be aware is now it is all carted. They will not be getting out of the vehicle and grabbing bags on the street as they did previously. Right, right, right. absolutely. Thanks for pointing that out. Um, and actually, as you brought that up, uh, a question. So our contract starts uh, the 1st of October. Is that going, is that, um, rental of that card or whatever, is that October through September or is that January through December? No, sir, we will be ready with the cards come October 1st. So it'll October be- October through like December. Oct so the it'll be October through September. Through December, it's, it's every calendar year. That's what I'm asking, is it a calendar year or is it based on when the contract calendar. starts? It's- Al Allison, I can pull it up real quick, but is the, the additional card calendar year or fiscal year? With the town doing the, the billing on that? Yes. I, I don't know that we, yeah, without specifying which one. Yeah, it, would it, just, it really should be fiscal year because that's when be. we do our solid waste it, assessment. Right. Exactly. That's I was fine. thinking it would line up remember. with the fiscal okay. year. Right. Okay. I just want to make clear on that. Good. Good. I've got, a, I've got some questions. Yeah, go ahead, Gary. Okay. Um, I'm not sure who to direct this to because it deals with in the meat of the contract. Um, maybe Allison can handle this one uh, or um, on page 80 of 169, it's the monthly rates for residential collection services. If uh, somebody, whoever can answer this, uh, can turn to that page. Um, well, my question is the solid waste generation factor, which is in the middle of the page, per household per month, and it shows it uh, being divided by 2,000 uh, times the disposal tipping fee equals the monthly disposal component. Um, what is the number 2,000? It's just taking pounds to tons. It's converting it into tons because the tipping fees are charged on a per ton basis. Okay, so it doesn't, it doesn't have anything to do with, num with uh, household counts or anything like that. All right, no. then the second question is, it, came, uh, it comes down to 563.91, but in the contract it shows 540. It's a, uh, a plus a difference of uh, $20. Is there a reason for that or? Was the 563, are you looking at pounds per household? Is that the number you were? Yes. Yeah. Citing? So, okay. So that answered that question. And um, the other question I had is on the bulk pickup, I noticed in the fine print um, that you will be taking, uh, that waste management will be taking uh, concrete, uh, sheetrock, things of that nature that are construction related that we, we didn't have picked up before. Um, I want to be kind of clear on that. I, did, did I read that correctly? Well, let me make a, a distinction here. What we did in this contract is that we have a definition for contractor generated waste, which would be something like what a building contractor would, would generate. Contractor generated would be exempt from this contract. But okay. if a residential service unit was, was you know, doing standard updates or maintaining their home, so there may be some, some of that kind of material, that would be included as part of bulk waste. So there's, 
construction and demolition debris that could be generated by a residential service unit that would be obviously smaller amounts and you know just what would be generated on the site as part of normal upkeep right so that's so, in this but the contractor generated is exempt from this contract okay yeah that that's what i thought but i just wanted to make sure so if a homeowner generated some small amount of concrete or uh pulled carpeting or flooring or something to that effect that would that's okay to be used in the right. bulk as as uh as, as i read that um the uh last question i have or, or statement actually is um it would probably be really beneficial through this transition that we have a, a, what we call an FAQ um, on our website, uh, frequently asked questions, because I know it's gonna be extremely repetitive with, okay, does the blue cart go on the left side? Does the green cart go on the right side? You know, that, uh, things like that, yeah, what yeah. can I put out? Um, so I'd love, to, I'd love to have something like that developed. I don't know who does that, if that's uh, uh, waste management, that does that or, or Allison or us or, or our team on something like that. But it's a suggestion on my part because I can just see this coming now where the phones are gonna start ringing uh, on all five of us and we are all we may end up giving five different answers. Yep. You know, yep. something like that. I'd love yep. to see an FAQ put out somehow, somewhere that uh, is accessible 24 seven, you know, like on the town website or something to that effect. I know. Yeah, no, that sounds good. I do think probably the single biggest, um, and this is what I think Keith was allude, uh, alluding to, I think the biggest thing that's going to be a difference that we are going to feel the impact of is people now put out their cans and then they throw out all these other bags of additional garbage that's out there on the side of the road. Well, those gar bags are not gonna be picked up. Those bags are gonna be left there. It's gotta be put in the can and I think that we need to do some major education right. um, between now and October 1st on that because that's going to be, I think, uh, the single biggest pain point in moving in this, into this contract. When Gary's done, I have a question for Andy on that. Okay, well, go ahead. I'm, I think you're done, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. Okay. So Andy, it probably would be uh, not a good thing to start asking you questions about, but I'm assuming you're putting together some sort of a communications plan so that the residents understand the different options they have, as well as the changes in service, the cart system versus garbage pails, et cetera. So, town, yeah, town staff is well aware of it. Town staff is well aware of it. We'll work very closely with WM. Uh, I know Susan's here tonight. I know she's already given a lot of thought to that. I, I can tell you it will have a dominant location in the September newsletter Good. in advance. Uh, to take the vice mayor's suggestion, include that information on the website as well. We'll certainly do that. We, we want to do everything we can to educate the residents up front. Uh, Council Member Albritton suggested potentially a workshop. If that becomes viable or necessary, we'd certainly do, do that as well. The, the better we communicate the change, the details, and answer the questions in advance, the less of a problem we're going to have. So that's in all of our best interest to do that, communicate that up front as, as best we can. Very right. Good, good. Uh, I had one other thing I wanted to mention to you, Mayor. In reading through this, I remember when you came back with your list of concerns from meetings you had with various neighbors throughout the community. One area you felt probably may not have been fair under the current contract is somebody really paying twice for landscape debris. Right. Um, in this contract, landscape debris that would be cleaned up by a contractor is exempt, so there wouldn't be any pickup of landscape That's debris. Right. So I just yeah no I saw that and that's really it's that's that's a town ordinance that right. we can't do that I still I still don't think that's fair <laughs> to be honest with you but uh, you know you win some battles you lose some battles so I, I <laughs> it is what it is but uh, the law. but uh, yeah it you know we've got an ordinance in, in town that does not allow it so okay, good okay. May mayor there are two other things I just want to point out real quickly uh, first off um, I'm not as old as I thought my memory was correct the, the contract did say calendar year. So if it is the desire to change it to fiscal year, it's when we bill it. It has no impact on waste management at all. We'll need to change that language. It's page 42 of 169, section 6, A4. Did I do that right? And uh, it currently says that the town will invoice its residents in December every year for the next calendar year, but we will change that uh, post-meeting to reflect uh, a fiscal year instead. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the second thing to point out, just so that everyone knows, 
is for the first time ever your lang your um, language in this contract is going to uh, a true up um, essentially on uh, on on tonnage being disposed. Um, and what that means is waste management had come in with a much higher price based on their assumption that our waste disposal, collection disposal, was more than we believe it to be. So rather than going back and forth on that, uh, we agreed to true up language to actually have a starting point higher than where we've averaged for the last, you know, five years. But um, if it comes in higher, you know, there'll be a true up where waste management gets paid some more money based on actual tonnage disposed. But if it comes in lower, they will give us uh, uh, essentially a credit back, money back as a result. So um, just wanted to mention that because that is something different than we've ever had before in a contract. Good. Thank you, Keith. Um, a question that I have has to do with the recycling. I, I'd like to get um, I'd like to get an idea from WM. How's the recycling going to work um, as far as um, we've had situations in the past where um, we, we pay for recycling, but what we put in the recycle bin gets put in the same truck as the regular waste, solid waste. Um, I'd like to get, tell me what's going to happen with our recycling. Absolutely, Mayor. So, no, there will be no commingling of the recycling and the solid waste. We have different routes for recycling, different routes for solid waste, different routes for bulk collection. Uh, in this contract, the recycling component is part of the residential rates. The material that WM collects will be taken to our Rooter MRF, which is in Pembroke Pines, and it will be processed for recycling, and materials will then be taken out of that stream, uh, baled accordingly, and put out to market so it can be repurposed and reused. So your recycling program is, is healthy. Uh, we have established recycling uh, recyclable materials that we've um, put forth, and I believe it's exhibit, uh, uh, one of the exhibits, I forget, I think it's exhibit three. Okay. And so you can see the list of materials that are currently being accepted uh, for the residents of South Coast, of South Coast Branches. Awesome, Absolutely. awesome. That's another element, mm -hmm. Andy, that I think we need to do some serious education on. Yes. Um, I think that, uh, you know, we, we as a town, I think we believe in recycling, and we want to make sure that our residents have all the tools to be successful at recycling, knowing what they should recycle, what they should not recycle, and um, just have a good, a good um, let's, let's lay out the rules so that we can be as effective as possible. Absolutely, sir. Um, and as I was just reminded, we offer tours of our recycling facility for oh. the town, for the town's residents. Uh, just I will be your point of contact. I will be the liaison for the town. So if you are interested Sign me up. In tour, I'd love to see it. We'll do it. Absolutely. I'd love to see mayor, it. You will be first. And of course, we'll- <laughs> Former mayor we'll would like to see it as well. We'll offer the same to, to you, your residents, and of course, to each of uh, the council members uh, under Sunshine Laws, of course. Sure. But we will be happy to provide tours so that you can see for yourself not only the operation that we have, but where your material goes and how it is processed. That would be wonderful. We're very, very proud of our facility. That would be wonderful. Mr. Mayor, may I ask your indulgence? Sure. Um, and, and allow me to briefly yeah, please, introduce please. my team? Yes, awesome. Very good. All right, would you guys stand up? You look so handsome. Very good. So <laughs> I am here today, <laughs> Mr. Mayor, uh, Vice Mayor, Council Members. I wanted to introduce you to the team that will be overseeing not only the transition, but also the service. So first, I have Tom Ritter, and he is the Senior uh, Operations Director. Next, we have John Desilu. He is the District Manager who oversees the Holling District, the, uh, the collections operations. Then we have Justin Warnemann. Justin is our Fleet Manager. He's a, our Fleet Manager, and he can, well, he knows everything about our trucks, where they are, and what is missing. So you have any questions, you can see that. <laughs> then we have Wonderful Mr. Dave Allison. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Leighton Francis. Pardon me. Okay, we thought They're wonderful. both wonderful. <laughs> I was looking at Dave. Leighton Francis, Leighton, will be the route manager for the town of South Coast Ranches. And he is an experienced, thorough, respected route manager. And his job is to oversee the drivers, the routes, etc. And the wonderful Dave Allison, who will back up the wonderful Mr. Leighton Francis. Um, we want you to know that we have systems in place 
obviously this wonderful team. I keep using that word, but I am very, very proud of, of the folks with whom I work. They will be looking over uh, the process, the transition, the implementation, and I will be personally responsible, of course, to work with the town to communicate the education pieces, to make sure that your residents are aware of what is happening. And that doesn't end October 1st. That continues. That continues throughout the course of the contract. So with that said, of course, I'm happy to entertain any other questions. Yeah, yeah let me just oh, say. Oh, I'm sorry, one more person. Yeah. Luigi Pace. Luigi Pace, the wonderful <laughs> Luigi Pace. So Luigi Pace is a garbage man through and through with over 30 years of experience, and he is the area manager for Public Sector Solutions, the team under which I, I work, and his lovely spouse, who keeps him in check. Wonderful. Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. Is, is there any chance we can get their business cards with their cell phone numbers on Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, yes. yeah, we, we, I want yeah. you to know that we sincerely, we sincerely welcome you to our town, and I mean that very sincerely. Um, we have learned how important it is to have a good partnership, and um, we are going to work very hard, and, I, and I, I'm sure that you all are going to work very hard. Um, you know, there's always bumps, <laughs> no, no pun intended, there's always bumps in the road, but, um, you know, we, we want this to be a success, and we know it takes hard work, and we appreciate the work that I know you all are going to put into it, so thank you. Thank you very much, Mayor. We are yeah. privileged to be here. Oh, okay. If you all, all right. If you all want to see the we yard. We want the full tour. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Uh, come on down. We have a wonderful yard. You can see our fleet. You can see our drivers. You can meet our drivers. You can watch them uh, just take off in the morning, the launch in the morning, which is impressive. Uh, you can see what our What time planet. is that? Uh, well, uh, any time. Uh, any time after 2 a.m. You can, okay. come, you can come at 6. Okay. Can. I already have an appreciation <laughs> for the work that you all do. Yes. <laughs> but uh, all kidding aside, you are welcome to come, of course. And, Thank you. Um, and you will meet in person not only the drivers, but you will see the attention to safety that we have and how that prioritizes. That's not uh, a priority for us. It's our core value, and you will see it firsthand. So, again, we're very, very proud of the operation we have. But more than that, we are so privileged to be here this evening. Thank awesome. you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Um, I just want to, so I, I do want to highlight for the residents that, um, you know, we, in our previous contract, we, you know, the team did an amazing job at negotiating a very low price, um, which we have benefited from for a long time. Um, we all know the inflationary pressures that we're under um, as a town, a state, a country, a world. Um, and so, we are going to be hit with a substantial increase in this um, in this new contract, and uh, you know that's unfortunate. But we are looking, as you saw with the presentation, um, this is this is a quality vendor that was picked. Um, the prices are still very very competitive, and um, and so we look forward to starting fresh. And uh, but there will be there will be some financial financial pain associated with this. And as we get in talking to the, you know, the budget and the, uh, um, the assessments, we'll see more of that. But, uh, um, but I, I, think, I think we're off to a good start, and I'm looking forward to it going forward. Yeah. I did have one more question that I caught that um, I, I forgot about. On page uh, 55 of 175, under ancillary services, it says here the contractor shall provide four HHW, that's household hazardous waste, and e-collections per year. And then the next, in parentheses, it says one every other month. Wouldn't that be six? It just seems like we have a conflict in the numbers there. And then these four events, so it's either every other month or it's quarterly, the way I'm reading it here, and it says it both ways. So uh, I just want that, that's, uh, I'm not sure who that question goes to. Um, that's a Keith question maybe on the contract? No, no, you, you're, you're, if you found that, it's definitely a typo um, okay. because of the fact that I think last time, Andy, it was six, and they negotiated it down to four because of the cost. Well, actually, it was four, and because of Waste Pro's location, their proximity to the town, we added two more at their Pembroke Pines facility. So we had four in Rolling Oaks, 
at, at the park, and then we had an additional two at the Pines right. facility. So that's that's why we had six, but we're, we're going back to what was our original four. Okay, so it seems like we just need to fix one line in there. Okay. Yeah, um, just one last comment about WM now. You gotta fix that typo. You know, I think we, we parted company with waste management about 10 years ago, give or take. Um, when we went through the next contract, after a year or so, my neighbors were asking me, why do we ever get rid of waste management? And then under the current contract, I've been hearing it far more frequently as a council member. And the question has always been, why did we get away from them? Well, it was generally we were getting better prices. As everybody knows, you get what you pay for. And I'm very happy to have waste management back because they represent a quality brand. And we're relying on you because that's the single biggest complaint I get from residents. Why wasn't my trash picked up? Why wasn't my bulk picked up? It's amazing how people wait for the truck because they want to bring their pails in. It, and, and I know you guys will do a great job because we, our experience previously was, was an excellent relationship and uh, high quality service. So I won't have to be saying why we're away from waste management. You're back and I'm, I'm happy. Thank you. Mayor, real, yeah, go ahead. Mayor, real quick, I'll make it real short. I'd like to thank the consultant company, is it Allison? Yeah, Allison. Also, Allison, uh, for the way that they went through each and every uh, contractor, graded them. So we didn't end up with the lowest as cost, uh, and but I think we got one that has the best uh, ability to provide what we need. And, and I really appreciate the way that they did that, the way that they, you know, graded all that. So that was very nice of them. Thank you. Yeah, great point, Jim. Thank you, Allison, for all your work. All well, right, um, public comment. Any public comment on this item? I'd been disappointed, Newell, if you didn't get up. Yeah, I need to remind the council and waste management of a few things. One, you didn't state the cost per yard of the extra bulk. So what is that? We know it's 1750 now under Waste Pro. What's it going to? What about the alleviation of the previous problems we had with the previous contract with WM concerning their lack of service? We put into Waste Pro a lot of considerations and penalties, which we didn't use. This council refused to use them because of waste management and their lack of service and lousy service. How is that going to be alleviated this time after the honeymoon period? What is the new bill per year to the homeowner that we will see on our tax bill? What is the price for the true up per yard Versus, and is it the same as the true down price per yard? Will we get the same credit as we'll get billed up as if we get billed down? So, and also, are they going to fill the holes when they dig the, dig the fox holes with the claws because they're claw man? is in training. Are they going to fill those holes? We had a big problem with them last time, filling the holes. They dug out canal banks over in Sunshine Ranches, put a two foot, two and a half foot deep hole in front of my house. It was hell to get them to fill it. Is that in the contract? They're going to fill the holes that they dig out? because their claw guy is uh, in training. And so what's the, what's the deal? Is there penalties? My big question, because someone's up there, some people up there on the council seem to forget we put them into Waste Pro because of waste management. Thank you. Thank you, Noel.
Is there a charge that you know that they're going to charge for the extra yard or two or three? And how do they gauge that? In the past, it's been a nightmare. And people have just paid it because they don't want to be bothered. But I got to the point where I didn't put any out. Because if, if they're just going to charge us and say, hey, it's over and we're charging you. Now, I heard what Rod said, and I understand that. But ultimately, they're going to reach a point where they're going to charge you. Do they have a price per yard? Is that what they're going to charge per yard? And how much is it? Thank you. Any other public comment? Seeing none, public comment closed. Uh, there is a price per yard. I don't remember what it is right off the top of my head, but I did see it in there. Um, Newell, there is, a, con there is a, a, a paragraph in the contract specifically about um, if damage is done by digging it out, that they will, I think it was, if I remember, I was like more than six inches, as I recall. Um, and uh, in that case, they will come out and they will, uh, they will repair it, uh, bring it back. Um, and the numbers you were asked for, I don't have them on top of my head, but they are in the contract. I think we can get those to you if you want to come by for them. Yeah, yeah there's, there's, there's an exhibit separate that has all the, all the costs in it. Well, it's, if they would like to know, a good, good point. Newell said if the people in the audience would like to know as well. This contract is online with the agenda, and there is the uh, appendix in there. It's easy to find. It's a separate appendix that has these fees in there. So I would advise anybody can go online and take a look at it. It's on there right now. All right. Mayor. Mayor yes, go ahead. Just two things I want to add. One is we'll add that to what we promote to the public Good. via the newsletter, so we'll get that information out there because that is important information. Awesome. But Mr. Hollingsworth mentioned con tr uh, changes that were made to the contract for uh, Waste Pro due to waste management. And, and just a reminder, in 2012, the council actually left waste and went to right. SWS, SWS for right. five years, yeah. and, we're, and we had problems there which is what we put the changes yeah, in before so Waste Pro. Yeah, so we're actually going back to Waste Management, where many of our residents have said, you know, how come we don't go back to Waste Management? They were good when they were here. That, that's what we're doing. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. All right, any further council comments on this item? <clears throat> Seeing none, Russell, if you can please call the item. Council Member Albritton? Yes. Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, the, we're approving as amended with the two amendments that we. Sorry. Did. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. We're approving as amended. Uh, do we need to? Let's get the uh, uh, the maker. Uh, yeah, the maker what, of the motion what, to. What are we amending now again? So the, we we had the the change that Bob found, right? Uh, correct, Mayor. So the two okay. changes are as follows. Change one was we're changing the uh, fee to the residents for additional carts to be billed out at any time prior to September 1, so that it's based on a fiscal, fiscal year. year. And the change two was what uh, Council Member Hartman found, which is there'll be four collection events, one every quarter Perfect. of a calendar year. Right. So change my motion. Okay. Does the second accept the change? Accept. Thank you. Any further discussion on it? Seeing none, Russell, if you can please call the roll. Council Member Albritton? Yes. Council Member Hartman? Yes. Council Member Kaczynski? Yes. Vice Mayor Jablonski? Yes. Mayor Bright Cruz? Yes. Motion passes. Awesome. Welcome. Aboard. Welcome. All right. Um, where are we? Item number 11. Yeah. <clears throat> Mayor, item number 11 is a resolution of the Town Council of the Town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, amending resolution number 2021 087, which. You want me to keep reading it? No, I'm just, I'm <laughs> That's a question for Jeff. I'm not sure. This is a resolution of the Town Council of the Town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, amending resolution number 2021-087, which approved waiver of plat application number WP-30-21 to correct legal descriptions in the exhibits to the resolution, authorizing the mayor, town administrator, and town attorney to execute any and all documents necessary and proper to effectuate the intent of this resolution, providing for recordation and providing an effective date. 
or it, it doesn't impact this item uh, directly, but you're amending a quasi-judicial item, so technically speaking, it is quasi-judicial in nature. Um, so as a result of that, we'll just swear everyone in who wishes to speak on the item and follow with uh, the standard quasi-judicial rules that are in the backup. Um, so Jeff told me it's Russell's fault. <laughs> Is do that, we need? Do we? Do we want to move this to the next quasi judicial? Is no, it? Is it, it? It's, it's okay. I see the applicants represent. Oh, okay. Here. All right. It's, okay. It's, gotcha. It's All right. A, uh, Let's do it. It's just a scrivener's error in the legal description. Okay. And I'm sure they'll describe that. Um, but um, so I just ask if we could swear everyone in to at least have some formality. So anyone who wishes to speak on this item, if you could please uh, stand to be sworn in. Russell, are you going to swear me? You ready? Do you swear that the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, I see the applicants present. Jane, do you want to just announce yourself for the record, and then we'll turn it over to Jeff and then back to you? Good evening. Jane Storms, Police Land Surveyors, 5381 Knob Hill Road for the applicant. Thank, thank you. I have been sworn. Thank you. Thank Jeff, you, do you want to do a uh, presentation on this? Uh, no, but but very very quickly, uh, I, I think it's kind of self-explanatory. Uh, we're just we're correcting uh, an error in the legal description to make sure that it's uh, consistent with what you approved. The survey and everything that you reviewed was correct. The legal description on the survey was correct, but the word version that uh, was provided for the, for the agenda was wrong. Okay, and we're just correcting that. Thank you, Jeff. Jane, do you have anything to add? Okay, uh, Mayor, uh, we'll call on anyone in the public wish to speak on this I, item. Do we get a motion on this? No, because it's quasi-judicial, so you can wait one second okay. if you want to. It's either way. All right. You know. No, 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 that's good. That's whatever good. you want. It's different Thursday today. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, any no public comment, Mayor. Go over to you. All right. All right. <laughs> do I have a motion on this item? Motion. Motion. Okay. Motion second. to approve. Do you have a second? So I'll second it. Okay. All right. Is there any discussion on this item? All right. I think we're good. Councilmember Albritton? Yes. Councilmember Hartman? Yes. Councilmember Kaczynski? Yes. Vice Mayor Jablonski? Yes. Mayor Bright Cruz? Yes. Okay, Mayor. Uh, item number 12 is a resolution of the Town Council of the Town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, accepting and approving an agreement with the State of Florida Department of Environmental Protection, FDEP, to receive. $793,166.00 to complete drainage improvements in Green Meadows, authorizing the mayor, town administrator, and town attorney to enter into an agreement and providing an effective date. Bill motion. Virginia. Second. <laughs> I have a motion. My to area. Second. Thank you. There That's you go. the 700000 I spoke of earlier. Yeah. Uh, I am very, very happy to see that come to Green Meadows. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Any discussion from the council on that item? Seeing none, is there any public discussion on this item? <coughs> Seeing none, if we can please call the roll. Councilmember Albritton? Yes. Councilmember Hartman? Yes. Councilmember Kaczynski? Yes. Vice Mayor Jablonski? Yes. Mayor Brightcruz? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Item number 13. <coughs> is the resolution of the Town Council of the Town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, approving a budget amendment in the, town, in the amount of $9,780 and zero cents to the fiscal year 2021-2022 town budget to survey the Southwest Meadows Sanctuary Park and providing an effective date. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. A motion and a second. Is there any discussion on this item? Just a question. Is this the <coughs> survey is to establish the baseline? Rod's nodding yes. Thank you. Yeah. Very good. Any other comments? Any public comment on this item? Seeing none, Russell, if you can please call the roll. Councilmember Albritton? Yes. Councilmember Hartman? Yes. Councilmember Kaczynski? Yes. Vice Mayor Jablonski? Yes. Mayor Bright Cruz? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, so then we move into the budget millage items. All right. Mayor, would you like me to read all three together and then yes, have, please. A, have a presentation? Thank you. Okay, so item number 14 is a resolution of the Town Council of the Town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, setting the proposed millage rate and current rollback rate pursuant to Section 200.065 Florida statutes and establishing the date, time, and place at which public hearings 
will be held to consider the proposed millage rate and the tentative budget for fiscal year 2022. Directing the town clerk to file said resolution with the property appraiser of Broward County pursuant to the requirements of Florida statutes and the rules and regulations of the Department of Revenue for the state of Florida. Directing that a certified copy of this resolution be sent to the Broward County property appraiser and tax collector and providing an effective date. Item number 15 is a resolution of the town council of the town of South Los Ranchos, Florida, pr providing findings amending in part section 3 of resolution 2011-084 by providing a new def definition incorporating the 2022 fire assessment update report, approving preliminary fire protection assessment rates relating to the provision of fire protection services, facilities and programs in the town of Southwest Ranches, Florida for fiscal year 2022-2023, providing for the imposition and computation of fire protection assessments, providing for an exemption for veterans with service-connected total and permanent disability, providing for legislative determinations of special benefit and fair apportionment, establishing the preliminary rates of assessment, directing the preparation of a preliminary assessment role, authorizing a public hearing, and directing the provision of mailed and published notice thereof, and providing an effective date. A resolution of the Town Council of the Town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, relating to the provision of solid waste services, facilities, and programs to residential properties in the Town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, providing authority for solid waste services assessments, providing purpose and definitions, providing findings, incorporating the Solid Waste Special Assessment Methodology Report, directing the preparation of an assessment role, providing for a 50% exemption for veterans service-connected total and permanent disability, authorizing a public hearing, and directing the provision of notice thereof, and providing an effective date. Motion to approve. Second. So you now we're going to, yeah. so um, we've read all three in, but we're going to vote on them individually. Right. So, okay. so I'll take a motion and a second on item number fourteen. Item number fourteen. Yes. Motion to approve. Second. Thank you. So, Mayor, um, you can do this however you want. You may want to do a motion on all three items because they're all going to be spoken out at once. Right. So, if that's what you prefer. Okay. okay but we'll still vote individually. It has to be individual. Okay. So. All right. Make a motion yeah. for item second. fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen to be approved. Okay. Second. And second mayor. on three. Yeah. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah, mayor, mayor, if I may. Yes. A as you all know, this is really more of a reminder to, to the public and those who might be watching at home. Uh, tonight is necessary for our trim compliance. It is in imperative for the council to establish the maximum millage rates, fire assessment rates, and solid waste rates. This is really just a, a, a part of our budgeting process. We have a budget workshop in, in August. We have two public hearings in September. What we're doing tonight is establishing the maximum rates. Any one of these rates or all three of these rates could, could come down between now and final adoption. This just establishes the ceiling, not the floor. And uh, I'll just, in a moment, turn it over. I made it through 10 budgets with Marty Sherwood. Uh, it's been a little bit of a different process the year, this year, and that's, and that's been good. The town uh, has a, a new financial ad administrator in Emil Lopez. Uh, this was our, our first budget working together. It's been very smooth. It's, it's gone very well. And I just want to turn it over to him and town controller Rich Drum to give the presentation for this evening. Thank you, Mayor. I was trying to stall while they got very the mics good. going. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Andy. And Emil, welcome to the party. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor, um, Vice Mayor, co Council Member, staff, and the public. Thank you for the kind introduction. Um, as, as, as the town administrator indicated, it's my first uh, proposed budget. Um, first, I want to uh, pretty much just um, commend um, the, the great work that uh, Rich Strom, the controller, which is sitting to my right, and uh, Vanessa Redman, the procurement and budget officer, I mean, for our works, uh, we wouldn't have been able to get this done um, as timely as we did uh, with all the work and hours that has to be put in together. Um, and that said, uh, at the same time, working with um, Andy, uh, the town administrator, I want to uh, thank him for his support. The town clerk's office and every director and every staff uh, actually who contributed. Uh, Susan for creating um, uh, the cover sheet and, and, and everyone, everyone put their little pieces into this proposed budget. Well, thank you to everyone. Um, that said, um, 
for for the public to to know that uh, the proposed budget was actually posted in in the city's website. Uh, it's at uh, at the front desk for any visitor who wants to actually look at it. Um, it we have it here. Uh, this presentation is also available for the public should they want to actually follow through um, our discussion here. Um, as um, Andy and uh, the town clerk uh, Russell indicated, this presentation actually is inclusive of the three items, 14, 15, and 16. So we're going to be making uh, a post into once we get to that, should there be any questions, comments from for the council members as well as the public, and for the approval. And again, just being repetitive, that is the initial uh, not to exceed um, millage rate and the fire assessment and the solid waste assessment. Um, that said, uh, let's just start with the first uh, with the first slide. Um, this is just pretty much uh, the summary uh, introduction as to what we're going to be doing here, which is uh, we are proposing a reduction in the millage rate. Uh, which is pointed on the first page. There's no um, teased door, non sir tax millage um, being included in this year's budget, just the same situation for the last two years. There's going to be an, an increase on the fire assessment as far well as the solid waste as it was mentioned and discussed during the first previous presentation. The next one. Um, so this page is pretty much what um, Andy was uh, making reference to it. Um, we're going... We're going over the dates that um, are required. Uh, just one second, I just want to have to. We're going over the dates that is required. Um, we're going to have the, the uh, workshop uh, next month and the two um, public hearings in September. This information has already been post posted and published on the Southwest Ranches magazine. So it's out there, and the public's already aware of that. Um, with that said, going to the next one. Um, this is pretty much a, a, a closer summary of what I presented and discussed on the first page. This is more indicative of what we have the previous year versus what uh, we are proposing this year. Um, there is uh, um, an increase, as I mentioned, on the fire assessment for 199.66. And there is also uh, a significant increase on the solid waste. This, again, is the average based on the parcel lot size. Uh, it, it would vary um, on, on each one of the parcel lot. Um, but again, it's important to mention, and, and I'm going to sound repetitive, but I'm going to be mentioning this every time the topic actually comes up, which is on the fire assessment. Uh, the fire assessment comparison that we're doing here from the year before, which is the $60.86, is representative of the um, subsidized uh, amount that was uh, approved by council last year in the amount of $300,000 that reduced uh, the previous year's proposed fire assessment from 764.44 to the 690 that we're gonna come into the next, into a few more slides. Next one. One before. <laughs> Not a good sign. <laughs> um, Not a good sign. <laughs> with, here, just uh, an introduction as to how we get um, to the um, to the tax to the tax levy on on each resident. Um, is there is a market value that someone is willing to pay for the property, and then there is the assessed value, which is assigned by the property purchase on each side. Um, we do get that information on June first which is the tentative um, amount, and then we also get it on July uh, 1st. The numbers that we're going to be presenting to this council actually is the ones uh, from July 1st, which is the final one. Next page. Is this slide? <laughs> it's, it's, uh, we're trying to be um, um, participation from outside, so they, who, those who are watching actually see what we're going through. Uh, included sound. That's that's one. Um, uh, we wanted to keep that Marty's. That is, that is yeah, Marty's. That was an homage figure. to Marty. Yeah. That's what yeah. I thought it was. Who yeah. shot the eagle? Yeah, is the eagle yeah. coming or not? That's what that, I'm that one. It's actually the slide that you're looking at. The eagle is gone. Um, the eagle but is we're, gone. we're we're flying um, uh, on a good direction, which is we're going down 
on the military. What we try to be um, show in this slide is, is the fact that rather than having um, one um, military, which is past practices of what's been presented to the cancer, we wanted to just show what uh, the military has been, uh, including um, uh, in, uh, apart from, from the millage, from the operating millage, the TISDOR millage. And if you look at um, the, the slide, uh, what we are proposing this year, 4.15, is actually the, the, the lowest it has been since 2018, if we only go by the operational uh, from 4.1017 now it's 4.15. Next slide. Uh, okay. Um, how do we get to decrease the millage? Um, as everyone is aware, inflation is, is running wild. Um, um, last reading in June was 9.1. Um, as many predict that this is the peak uh, there's no one actually who can act, um, say that with 100% certainty. Um, so, but that has to be taken into consideration, projection into next year. Uh, the second um, consideration is, is the assessed value, valuation of the property um, in the town of Southwest Ranches. He has been very good. As a matter of fact, we broke this year's, last year's record. So um, it's 14.7. Um, uh, seven nine. That's as, as indicated on number two is a new record, and as again is the net new taxable value, which is eleven point ninety, uh, compared to the A fifty four from last year. So here we're going to get to a point which has been uh, discussed during tonight's meeting. Um, this is the program modifications. Um, we are uh, providing 20 in total. This 20 includes the one that actually um, falls into um, fire rescue. Um, here, as you see, uh, there's um, no millage impact on, on the first two. The second one, the system engineer, that's, that's something that was also discussed. That's the combination of the two positions. In, even though it says no millage impact, we actually saving uh, it uh, close to $20,000 by, by proceeding with this uh, change. And any one of the P program modifications that are being presented here are in the proposed project if you want to look into further detail as to the language and, and the, the object code as to what they relate to. Okay, so um, in this slide, basically we're going over again uh, the remaining um, program modifications. Uh, we are uh, including uh, the first one uh, this year because the last study was actually done in 2017 and it merits that it's best practice and recommend that it's done every five years. Um, so we, are, we went back to, last, to the last two studies and determined the amount for next year. And then again, when you see the volunteer fire department, the reason why it has no millage impact is because there's no operational millet. This is part, part of the fire assessment. Okay, so um, now we're going into from the program modifications to the capital improvement projects. Um, we have 11 uh, for, this, uh, for the proposed uh, fiscal year 22-23. Um, on this page, as you uh, can see, there's no millage impact on any one of those projects. That's basically because they're grants related and the first two are because they're, they're coming from the fire assessment. Okay, on this slide is the bread and butter of the capital improvement projects uh, that are funded by the town. And as, as it was indicated, earlier by the mayor and, and some of the council members. Uh, the first one item is the one that I'm going to highlight is the $2.8 million that we're doing for drainage improvement projects. And if you can see that uh, the, only, uh, mill the only amount that is impacted by this project for the next fiscal year is only $200,000. That's, again, to the great work that Emily and the team has been put together to, for us to be able to get to this point. Um, out of that, 
half a million dollars has already been um, matched by the town on this fiscal year, which is being rolled over into next year. So if you look into that, we're talking about out of the 2.8, uh, the town actually receiving grant um, over two, two, $2 million. It's, it's $705,000 that we're matching out of that. It's, 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 it's a tremendous amount of work. Great. The next one. And oh, one more. Um, so what is the impact of the millage rate? Well, first, by um, administration recommending it reduce in millage, we're pretty much uh, reducing the revenue that the town would be receiving by $182,458. Um, uh, a change that was made to um, this presentation was, uh, was that, that um, from before when we presented uh, to the council, uh, the, the millage value per thousand, we utilize 250,000, which is more commonly used by municipalities and towns across um, Broward. Why? Because that's usually the average of a home. Um, Southwest Ranch is exactly a different um, concept. So we increased that this year to 500,000 to get more clarity as to how much of an impact it would have. So based on that, um, and using that same 500,000 from last year's number, even though we, we had the 250, we, to compare it to apples to apples, we did that um, change. And based on, on, on the changes we're making, um, this will represent a combined $197 increase to the residents. But this is using the current year rollback. rollback. Um, what that is a calculation that is based on previous year's assessment, previous year um, tax valuation, and the revenue that the town received. If we use that and we compare that to this year's, should we have left the millage intact, um, then that would represent an increase. But instead, it's providing our residents a savings of $50 per 500000 And another point to bring up is that as, as, as being part of the presentation here from the proper person's website and, and, and common knowledge to the cancer and the, and, and the public is that uh, your home, uh, based on the Save Our Homes uh, exception, it cannot go more than uh, the 3% uh, compared to the CPI and, and the assessed increased value, whichever is lower. And, and this is basically um, um, the table uh, for what we are uh, proposing, which is uh, a millage rate of 4.15, no teas, no teas are included. And here you can see the 197 being referenced at the end, and that is, again, uh, a point, pointing in reference to the rollback rate, which is above the 3.7561. And now the, um, I'll turn it back to the council if there's any question we here. And again, I just want to remind everyone this is a not to exceed, uh, meaning that we can always come down, not any higher. Great. Thank you, Emil. Any questions from the council? Just a quick one. Yeah. So the millage rate at uh, 4.15 assumes revenue only from um, uh, ad valorem taxes and doesn't leverage any of our um, reserves that we have uh, in the bank today? Correct. Okay. I got one, one thing. Yeah, go ahead, Dave. And, and the, this millage rate, again, um, doesn't include any, uh, or, or what's the impact from the uh, sale of P3 property? I didn't hear. I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Oh, He's well, asking the impact of the, the P3 impact from property. The P, uh, sale of the P3 property on the uh, setting of the millage. They, I'm sorry. The, the, the property, uh, the property, MG3 sale. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Sorry. sorry. Um, none of those numbers were incorporated or taken into consideration for this uh, proposed budget. Because the deal hasn't been executed. Correct. Not even the debt service payment has been reduced, removed, or taken off of our books anyway. So, and, and that's something that would I would not recommend. No. All right. Thank you. Wouldn't follow a gap. And um, how much 
what have we, TISDOR is not included here because we're going to get the funding elsewhere. How much funding have we, are we anticipating for TISDOR this year? Um, we're not including it because they, they haven't opened up the window. Once the window is open, then uh, the team will go ahead and, and, and apply for those projects. Um, are we targeting a number there? I, I, we do not have a number targeted that I'm aware of, but we are based on the projects that we contemplate that will be approved or taken to, into consideration by the MPA. Okay. Okay. Any other questions from the council? Seeing none. Um, any questions from the public? Joel Hollingsworth, 199th Avenue. Uh, I'm looking at your question right there, the TIS door. At this point, we should have the projects already lined up and be working towards getting them ready for October 1st already. Why don't we have the numbers? That's my question. Why has, because We've had the problem last year very badly out in my area with the projects, with the people not knowing anything. You haven't had any notices to the individuals of the future TISDOR projects. You haven't had any notice at all for a meeting with them. And you're going to be letting the contracts without ever talking to the residents and getting their input. So what is this TISDOR you're going to do? Are you not going to have TISDOR at all next year? Or are you just going to slap it down on the people and say, this is what we're doing, and to heck with the residents? That's what I've been talking about, because what is done last year was an abomination in TISDOR, especially the drainage. The paving was fine. It was the drainage part of it. On 199th, 201, and 202, there have been five people injured by the drainage that has been done out there. You haven't had any communication at all with the future. I have heard from, from the council members, several of you, that's not going to happen again. Well, here it's happening. With the rest of the budget, we want to know what is each department going to have. I would like a copy of the budget. It should be ready. The proposed budget should be ready and in your hands, probably. I'd like a copy to look at, and I'd like a copy for any resident that wants one to take a look at it. We take a look, and we find things that we don't like. As far as I'm concerned, this year it should be the rollback rate. It is a very rough year for the people in this town and also everywhere in Florida, money-wise, with the increases we have in the inflation. Cost of gas, cost of food, cost of everything else. Yep. And we're going to get hit real bad on fire and waste this year. You can't even give me the numbers what waste is when I ask for them. You can't even tell me what the number is per yard for extra. All right, no. Are you I got 55 seconds still. I want to know these questions and they should be able to be answered right now by the financial department because of discussions with the administration and council. Getting, oh, trust us. No. We I've, we've learned a long time ago, you don't trust. You have the numbers, you have the budget. You have the proposed budget already, and it's for you guys to chop it up and say, oh, I like this, I don't like that. Well, it's also the responsibility of the residents of this town to go, I like this and I don't like that, and you're overcharging us, or you're ch this needs to be put in. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. Any other public comment? Seeing none. Yeah, go ahead, Andy. Yeah, Mr. Hollings, Mr. Hollingsworth brought up three different issues. I disagree with him on all three. And, 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 and uh, I'll, 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 
first issue was projects not being teed up. There are there are projects that are that are that are in the timeline on, on our plan to move forward. We we are pursuing county surtax funding, as you all know. I don't know what the timing of that funding will be, but the projects in the timeline still exist. Those projects. The second issue was community meetings. We can't have community meetings till we know what those pro what the timeline is when we're going to start those projects. We we agree 100 percent that we need to have those community meetings. We, we've talked about that amongst council, among public work staff. We will have those meetings at the appropriate time. Uh, the third issue was, was the budget book and making that available. There is one at the front desk that's available. And if it's not already posted online, I believe it is, it, it certainly will be posted online for residents to review as well. So with all due respect, well, that's my perspective on those. Thank issues. you, Andy. Appreciate it. Any other comments? Seeing none, please call the vote. Well, we're just calling the first vote. We've just had the first yeah, presentation. Councilmember Albritton? Yes. Councilmember Hartman? Yes. Councilmember Kaczynski? Yes. Vice Mayor Jablonski? Yes. Mayor Bright Cruz? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. All right. Fire. <clears throat> Well, thank you, mate. It's not on yet. Mike, yeah, not on. No, no, but that's fine. It's the next one. There we go. Okay. Um, thank you again. Um, I just want to just point out to the council and the public that um, um, Mulelytic, Chris Wallace from Mulelytic, which is a consultant who created the study, actually is here present. And that introduction, then, um, again, we start with item number uh, 15. Okay, so um, the fire assessment basically, and, and it's pretty much uh, required um, per the statutes to be established on a yearly basis. Uh, the proposed resolution tonight is providing, um, again, a uh, not to exceed um, for us, and it's going to be uh, review, talk to, and, and, and process throughout the process. Something that I want to highlight is that the fire assessment go to three different um, process or phases for um, to the point where we are now. First, we start with the fire advisory board presentation in May. Uh, it gets reviewed, uh, it gets uh, approved and adopted by the advisory board. And then it goes to, uh, in June uh, to the fire board, which is actually uh, review and any recommendation changes and adopt and approve. And now we're into the final phase of that, which is then presented to Council on the public during the budget process for approval. Um, there's two um, portions of the fire assessment that needs to be pointed out. The first one is that 14 homestead um, properties um, are being exempted. Um, uh, this is uh, for disabled residents, and the amount, the impact uh, to the town uh, for that exception is 12,455, which it's um, uh, taken into by the general fund. And the last one is uh, the, uh, the levy that is not um, allowed um, per Florida statute related to agricultural lands uh, that are exempted. For this year, uh, the amount that that exemption is uh, impacting the general fund is by 163,548. Um, this is this slide provides you with uh, the table of the different prices for the last uh, four years. As I mentioned on the summary sheet of the presentation when I started, um, it went in 21 from 629 to 14 to 690. Again, this is as a point of reference that that was attributable to uh, council approving a reduction, uh, a move of 300,000 plus from a project into uh, this assessment in order to minimize the impact to the public, to the taxpayer. Um, that uh, impact is actually being absorbed by this year's rate. Um, so the 690, it went from 690 now, um, what's being proposed is 889.66. Um, what we're trying to do here in this slice is just to provide like a uh, square footage cost. I do understand that um, last year uh, we did a combined, um, uh, the institutional, the commercial, and the warehouse 
into one. Um, that provided uh, it, uh, it's, it's some rate of um, of 0.8314, and this year it's going up by um, 2.8633. What what I tried to accomplish in this slide is basically provide a cost per square footage of those three combined institu uh, um, the combined methodology, which is the institutional, commercial, and warehouse industrial. Thank you. Um, th as, as, as part of the study and, and the recommendation and, and something that I need to uh, bring up to the council's attention is that uh, one of the recommendations of the consultant this year during the review of this information is that uh, we should, rather than use a five-year uh, call distribution volume to increase that at least a year every year to get to a more stable uh, comparison on the call distribution. Uh, that's something that we will continue to discuss going into next year, but we are proposing exactly the same methodology that was used last year. Uh, using that comparison, um, the, the, the call distribution have changed drastically on some of of the different categories. Um, the reason we highlight on the residential because that's the more impactful based on the amount and that, that it takes and the volume that it represents of, of the 100. Something that we need to point out is that even though you, we only see that 3.72% increase uh, on the call distribution, we need to be mindful um, that the comparison that we're going to be seeing on the cost is not necessarily that 3%. And that is basically because, again, um, because of the subsidizing of the, of, of the last year's rate from the 764 to the, um, to the 690. Next one. And this slide pretty much just provide you basically uh, a summary of the information that I share through the slides, which is uh, the increase per residential which is 199.66. Um, uh, this, in, in essence, I, uh, it's always good to point out that we are including uh, the, um, the contract escalator with the town of Davie at 7.5%, uh, in addition to uh, the council approving a reduction last year from the 764.44 to the 690. The acreage actually had an increase of 7072 and um, as I mentioned on the combined uh, components from last year, 80, 0.8314 to this year, 0.8633, that represents the increase that you're looking at on the slide now. And with that, uh, we finished our presentation on the fire assessment, so we turn the floor back to the council. Any comments from the council? Obviously, this is a large increase, um, much larger than we'd like. We've got a couple of things. Uh, you know, hopefully we work through the contract and that will bring down this amount. Um, and we can also entertain some uh, adjustments like we did last year. Yep. So Creative we've got our work. Financing. I would just say, what's that? Creative financing. Yeah, yeah. I would say right. we've got our work cut out for us on this one. Great. And um, and we, we understand that. We'll work on it. But this is also before we've taken a crack at the budget. Yeah, that's exactly my point. Yeah, yeah. yeah this is this is the highest it can be, yep. and um, we understand we've got some work to do. Yeah, thank you. Um, any other comments from council? Any public comment on this? Seeing none, Russell, if you can call the roll on this item. Do we need a motion? Britain. Yes. What'd you say? Your mic goes up. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Councilmember Hartman. Yes. Council Member Kaczynski? Yes. Vice Mayor Jablonski? Yes. Mayor Breikers? Yes. Motion passes. All right. Solid waste. Thank you, Mayor. Back to item 16. That's it. Yeah, that one. So, again, we're going and to provide a summary of what the solid waste assessment actually um, it's for. Uh, it is required for tractor, and we need to provide that based on the town or ordinance. Um, something to point out is that um, 14, uh, 14 uh, accepted um, 
these several veterans qualify for this exception. Uh, last year, there were 10. Um, I mean, sorry, nine. So the impact to the towns um, for this exception, this for this tax exemption this year is 8,050 compared to 3,239 last year. Um, that's the amount that is going to be absorbed by, this, uh, by the general fund. And uh, again, this is again, uh, it's an, this this three um, portion that we're providing to the council is a requirement for us to meet the um, the deadline that we need to submit uh, this to the proper person on, on August fourth. Uh, August fourth. The next one. Um, here we're trying to um, need to be mindful when we presented uh, the proposed project. Uh, we did not have, uh, which actually the contract was um, approved by <coughs> council tonight. Um, so the numbers, what we tried to do, we based on the negotiations that we had at the time based on the price, which were very firm to where we are now. Um, so taking that into consideration, um, we are, uh, this is the, 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 the year increase um, that we are uh, expecting, projecting, estimating, and proposing uh, from 1.7 million in 2021-22 to 2.9. Uh, that essentially goes in line to what was presented to you earlier on, on, on percentage-wise. And this is essentially just as it was shown to you based on the fact that there was a, a, an increase across all the rates that are currently being provided by the town. Um, to some of the questions that were brought up during the initial uh, pres uh, presentation of the contract here, we are providing um, the council and the public and those are who are watching uh, what uh, the rate will be, will be. And this is based on the lot uh, size, on the parcel of the lot size, so be mindful of that, which is why uh, the information that I'm going to share with you now is that um, the average, the average increase is about $430 per parcel lot. This is the average. It could change from one to other, but the average. And that also represents the average of about 60% per resident. That would be what we are estimating and proposing that the impact would be per resident, 60%, an additional $430. Next one. Just a quick question on, uh, on your table. Um, I don't know if you've gotten there yet, uh, or if you've just gone past it. I just passed it. If you would go back one. Um, the bulk weight cost per unit, what is that defined as? It's um, the four column into it. I'm sorry? You, the cost, the amount? No, no, it says here bulk weight cost per unit, and of course I'm in Schedule F or Assessment F, so I see 874.44. What, what because I see, you know, uh, current and prior years, so I'm not understanding what uh, the bulk weight cost per unit means. We, we did not break down uh, the cost from last year's to compare it to this year's each individually. We did it as a whole. We, we, we brought in last year's, last year's total amount and then had it for this year. I, I did not. I can I can provide that uh, at a later time. Okay, I'll, I'll call yeah. you. I, I just don't understand what that column means. Unless somebody else understands. I think I think what that means um, is that is um, per unit, obviously per household, per home. Yeah, okay. per home, and it is based on these have these like these tranches here, these different groups, um, and so as the as the lot size gets bigger, because exactly. that's associated with lot size, the um, the amounts increase. Okay, so that's the what current year, or the proposed that is year? The proposed year. Proposed. Last year's yes. Thank you, Major. Last um, year. Yeah, Last I'm sorry, year. my right, computer right. just that's died. Right. Um, proposed, right. So maybe what you can do just below for clarity is put 2021 two. Right. Yeah, break break that down. We, what we did. I don't need you to break it any further. Just you, it it just better. label it better so okay. that I'm not asking you all these crazy questions next time. Got it. Because the rest of the columns all make sense. I mean, you could probably do the same thing for the solid waste cost per unit also. The same label. 
you know, for okay. the, yeah, do all your, those are. Yeah, because then your proposed total rates add up. The one that says total proposed rates fiscal year 22, 23. Total. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next slide. I'm going back to paper right now. I, my computer just died. Okay, so this is, again, um, um, a brief history or, uh, of what have already been discussed, how we got to this point. Uh, it's the fact that waste bulk contract expires this year on the, at the end of this fiscal year. So uh, this slide just pretty much shows the lineage of what had already been presented to the, to, to the town council. And this is just a recap of what we actually have presented to you. Um, it's, we are um, proposing uh, a reduce in the millage rate. Um, there's going to be uh, a fire assessment rate increase to property owners, mostly due to the contract escalator that we have, and, and another increase to solid waste based on of the change in, in providers. And of course, um, the cost of the services. And that, um, ends our presentation. Again, just this again is a not to exceed, and we can always continue the discussion to see where we get um, to to the, an amount that it, the count council is, is comfortable with. Good, good, thank you. Any comments from the council? Thank you. We got a lot of work ahead of us. Yeah, we got a lot of work, exactly, yeah. Gary. Um, you know, this is, uh, as, we, as we mentioned earlier, this is a factor of a number of things. Um, one, we have been enjoying a, uh, um, an unusually lower rate, even though it's still more than we want to pay. It always is, right? But uh, we negotiated a great rate years ago, and we are, have been enjoying that, so now um, we're moving on. But we're moving on because we need to move on because, uh, you know, we need to change vendors. And we saw earlier this evening, even though this is a big number, that it's a highly competitive number and that it's with a quality company. So... Um, but we do have some work to do here as well. Um, we understand that there are um, folks on fixed incomes and that this is, this is going to be a big, a big increase. So um, our pledge is we are going to work on it between now and the next meeting. This is a not to exceed number, and we hope to see this get lower. Um, I see Chris here, and he's wandering around. Chris, thank you. <laughs> You know, you almost escaped without, uh, without uh, being recognized, but um, we do appreciate that you're here, appreciate the work that you've done, and, um, and it went smooth, yes. Yeah, yeah. We're not there Absolutely. yet. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. All right, um, Jim. Yeah, Mayor, you are correct. We had a great price for a number of years with Waste Pro, uh, but then, in a sense, I hate to say we got what we paid for. Yep, uh, it, right. uh, so if you want the service, you have to pay for it. I'm sorry it's adding up this much. I mean, that is a lot for a lot of individual homeowners here, but I, I believe you're going to get the service that you want, and, and you know, that's just a cost of living. That's all. You can't get away from it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, I, um, I actually um, agree, and I think that it's um, – so saving <laughs> because we won't be go getting all these phone calls missed, missed, yeah. missed, yeah. missed, missed, yeah. missed, yeah. missed. Um, yeah. I and think the, the frustration, the frustration for the residents behind mm. those phone calls. Right. Absolutely. I think it's a, it's it's a wise trade off. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. All right. Uh, any public comment on this item? I think we need the mic back there. Well, it may be a quality company, but it's, I'm looking at the numbers. It's almost double, very close to double. And I asked before for the numbers, which was never put forward, how much would we save if we went to once per week on garbage? And how much would we save if we went to once every two weeks on recycling? Now, I know for Bob and me, that's going to be a problem because we recycle more than we throw out garbage. 
And I got a, a waste management can now because last time we had waste management, they destroyed our garbage cans all the time. So they had to replace mine, which was brand new at the time. And they gave me a waste management can. So I have a waste management can now, which is a big monster thing. Put a family of four in that sucker. But in the recycle, I have to pack it down, crush my you know cans and everything else to throw them in there. But what I'm saying is, what is the difference and what is the cost savings we can do on this waste management contract? Would one time a month, a, a week be enough for us? It, if it saves us a lot of money, we gotta cut down the price somehow. And I need for you to take a heavy look at it. If we need to go once per week, let's go once per week. And for recycling every two weeks, let's go every two weeks if it's a cost savings. But let's dig at it because doubling is totally, totally insane. I don't care how good a price we had. And you never said anything about what penalties are in there when waste management is going to do what it's going to do. It's going to screw up and it's going to do lousy service just like they did last time when they, that's why we got rid of them last time. Thank you. Great. Yeah, let me, I just want to respond for a second. So, uh, yeah, thank you, Newell. I think that, um, you know, you brought up some good points from the standpoint of the level of service and um, whether we evaluated that. That was one of the key elements of bringing in Allison uh, Trulock and, and her company there to do that evaluation for us. Um, also, so, so we did look at that. Uh, Andy could probably give more detail on it, but I know that I had a detailed conversation with Andy about it, looking at what the projected uh, savings would be if we were to go down to one pickup a week uh, for solid waste versus the two we're having here. And frankly, the, I was surprised at how minimal the savings were. And then, um, as you may recall, back when we started this uh, nine months ago, um, I did a, a major push trying to get as much public input into the service. What, what kind of service? What's important? What's not important? Um, to see if we could modify a little bit. And that's one of the reasons why we're doing the, the cans, the, you know, the automated pickup. Um, but, but the level of service was something with the two pickups a week that was actually pretty important to a lot of folks. You know, for me, you know, it's just my wife and I, um, we hardly ever use the second pickup. But for a young family with uh, bustling kids, um, it's critical. It's, you know, it's important. Otherwise, that garbage is stinking up for a whole week outside. So, so it, it turned out that was relatively important to a lot of folks in town. And so, um, so that, that was definitely, it wasn't like it was ignored. Those, all those machinations went through and, um, and we, you know, when you get down to the point where you're actually putting together a contract, you have to, you have to make a decision, what is it we're gonna put into the contract? And it was based on a lot of conversations, a lot of um, uh, projections from the consultants that we used. So we definitely looked at all that. Um, Bob, I think you had something. Well, I think you covered it. I was interested in the feedback from the community back when you queried people yeah. back in that. That was, what, March or so? Yeah, yeah. It was, you know, clearly, and I said it at the time, uh, I, you know, I, I, I got feedback. You know, some people wanted reduced service. Some people wanted more service. So I said at the time, you know, some folks are going to be disappointed because, you know, you literally were, some folks were looking for exact opposites. But tried to find that, that consensus that the majority of the folks um, we're, we're leaning towards, and that's, and that's how we built, that's how we built the contract. Yeah, Andy, I think. Yeah, just two things, and, and I, I hear what he's saying. Uh, the numbers for the scenario, scenario B, are in Allison's PowerPoint, so you, the numbers are there within the PowerPoint. The other thing is, we, we also hosted, in addition to all the outreach that, that you were talking about, we also hosted a, a community meeting here in Council right. Chambers and, and solicited input from the public as well. So we're, we're comfortable, as you said, that, that residents really wanted to keep that twice a week pickup. Right. Thank you, Mike. Right. <coughs> and the last comment is it's not double. It's, it's a big increase, but it's not double. Um, all right. Any other public, any other public comment? No further public comment. Any council comment? 
I see we're already packing our bags, so I think we're good. <laughs> if we can please call the roll. Mayor, we're yes. missing a motion and a second on this one, and also I don't know that we made one no, on. No, we, no, we did. Not. Initially, we took a motion and a second on all three. Oh, we did? Okay, yes. I thought we were doing them individually. My apologies. Okay, so we'll just copy them over. <laughs> Councilmember Albritton. Yes. Councilmember Hartman. Yes. Councilmember Kaczynski. Yes. Vice Mayor Jablonski. Yes. Mayor Breikers. Yes. Motion passes. Awesome. Motion. Gary, I am, I am thrilled you're back from COVID. You're feeling better, and it's your moment. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> All right, thank you.